Good evening folks, welcome back to another Wednesday Hobby Hangout, the first of the new year. It is the first, isn't it? Yes. I <laughs> uh, hope everybody is well, I hope everybody is having a, having a decent week, as far as you can do these days. Uh, let's have a look in the chat and see who we've got with us tonight. We've got uh, Lord Maiden in nice and early, hello to you buddy. ASDF is in as well, good evening. James J, good evening to you, he says he's nice and early. Uh, Peter Kuman as well, nice and early as well, saying evening all. James J is asking what everybody is painting tonight. Yeah, let me know if you are you hobbying, are you just kind of hanging out, are you just chilling, are you relaxing? What's your plans? Um, ESDF said he's going to be painting some test models. <sighs> test models, yeah. What what test models for what, mate? Uh, Lord Men says I hope to glue this uh, this model and then continue painting alternative Titania. Nice choice, fella. Nice choice. Uh, James J says he's currently painting an old orc man mangler and an old metal spider riders. May ask him how he would paint them all. Ah, nice one. Uh, Ortega says he can't stay tonight, but looking forward to the rerun. I'll say, uh, I will see you now, mate, while you're watching it back. But well, thank you very much for popping in. Uh, Stuart Hayes, the Mank Turner, says, Evening, guys. Evening, you, Stu. Um, Marcus, the super pumpkin man, says, I have to pick up a friend from the airport, so I've been listening to it, but can't chat. Well, I hope you're well, mate. Uh, safe driving as well. Um, we've got Mark Wright in saying, Evening, everyone. Hello, Mark Wright. Robert Zink, uh, Robert Zink, sorry, saying I'm here a bit early. How is everybody? Nice to see you nice and early, mate. Christian's in as well. Hello to you, mate. Um, Blizzard says, hello's. <laughs> Hello to you, Blizz. Mark Cawley's in as well. Nice to see you. She says, hope everyone's well. Um, <laughs> she was saying, yeah, as well as can be. John Estill says, oi, oi, it's like watching the car a dometer go around the clock. 9.99k. Yeah, we're close. I, I've kind of met, um, mentioned today in the Facebook group and stuff, there's a chance that we might hit 10k on the live stream tonight. My good feeling says I think we're just going to miss it. It's probably going to be early hours of the morning, I think. But we'll see what happens. It's close. I've had a bit of a kind of a good run the last um, the last week or so, and my subs have been increasing. I've been doing like somewhere between 20 and 50 subscribers a day. Which is it's kind of unusual for me. It's it's climbing at the moment. It feels like my views are going up, my subs are going up. It feels like I've I've hit a bit of a purple patch at the minute, and things are working quite well for the channel. Um, and that's kind of meant I I thought I'd be there about middle of January towards the end of January. But yeah, that that bit burst we've had at the minute has meant that it's kind of it's come around a bit closer. And I was hoping we would do it on the live stream tonight. If if we do, I've got bottle of whiskey there ready for a little celebration glass. Um, if we don't. We'll just celebrate it on Monday. We'll hit it by Monday. So yeah, I'm 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 easy either way. I've waited four years. I can wait another couple of hours. Um Peter Nicholas is here, gang. Hope everyone is well and motivated. Nice to see you, mate. Um uh, Dave McCarthy's in as well, saying so hope hope you're all well. Uh Tim Kelly, nice to see you too, mate. Hello, Spider Lord. Uh, we've got D Sonia, hello to you. Um Spider Lord said he's painting the bits from the Aliens board game. I've seen loads of people playing that, mate, but I've yet to see anybody paint them. So I look forward to seeing what you do with those. Uh, Tim said he's working on Conflict 47, the Soviets in a bit, and he's washing up right now. Rock and roll. Rock on, mate. <laughs> um, Joachim says good evening as well. Robert Sunk's building his gene stealers. Um, Joachim's still messing about with his colour shift stuff. Nice one. Uh, Peter says we'll try not to rig roll you during the stream. Yes, you, you definitely caught me today, mate. I was sitting reading it, go, and I just went, oh. Yes, nicely done, mate. Yes, there's testing if you can shade um, the colour shift holographic paint. I would doubt it, mate. I think it's kind of one of them. Just, it, it needs to just have the... I wonder if you could you could probably wet blend two different colour shifts together, maybe. Uh, Dave McKay's just printed out some coincidentals for the mini base. He's created some boring street stuff. Ah, it's never boring, mate. It always brings it to life. There's a few people started to submit some stuff now for the Ace of Base challenge. There's, there's a, probably about 10, 10 people send stuff so far, and it doesn't it doesn't end until I think it's like the twenty fourth or twenty fifth uh, of this month. So yeah, look forward to seeing those. 
John's finishing off his orc ships um, and building some others tonight. Bobby Clark, good evening to you, mate. He's finishing off a Sergeant Ripper Jackson. Nice one, nice choice. Um, where else are we there? Uh, VGA, good morning to you, sir. I hope you're well, mate. Tim says, never tried painting a bus before. I, neither have I, mate. So this is this was going to be just something to do in the background, nice and quiet. But I thought, you know what it is? We're close to the 10K tonight. I'm going to I'm gonna um, start painting this. So it's all primed. Um, Zenith all primed, ready to go. So yeah, we're just we're just gonna kind of take it easy. Hence, hence the Deadpool um, on the thumbnail tonight. Uh, I'm just gonna have a nice little chilled night and not worry about finishing it and not not worry about um, sort of how how much progress I make. It's just something just to kind of sit back and chill and relax with tonight. Um, Vijay says if it's live on stream, we need that happy dance. I'll give you the happy dance tonight. You can you can have the live happy dance. Um, and then we'll, and then I might do something special for 10k for everybody else. But you, you'd get to, you get to witness it. I've got a little counter on my screen here, so I can kind of keep an eye on it and see if we're getting close. But like I say, I think, I think we're just, I think we're going to just just miss it. I think tonight. Uh, Peter says I'm going to assemble the sacrosanct reinforcements for his stormcast. Nice one. Spider Lord says, "What whiskey you got? I have got, my friend. I will show you. I have got, uh, I've got a single malt Balveni." Um, 12 years old. There we go. Let's uh, focus. There we go. That's what we're. That's what we'll be uh, having a little tipple of if we hit it tonight. If not, it'll wait. It'll wait for next time. <laughs> um, <laughs> this in here, is your dance prepared? Vijay says, "Where are you streaming from today? Background looks different from normal. It's exactly the same room, mate. It's. I always stream these ones from the corners." Uh, only thing I've done different is I, I've moved one of the lights that's normally over that side. I've moved it to this side, so I've got a bit more light behind me tonight. But yeah, the, the background's exactly the same, mate. What you can see behind me is that's that's the bit that I face basically when I'm doing the live streams, and that that bottle, the whiskey there's on the table. But yeah, this is this is exactly the same as normal, mate. Um, where else we at here? Uh, VG is saying uh, he's got a mate coming over for game day to date. He's taking Arkham Horror and Elder Sign to the table. Nice one, mate. Um, Stu saying he's been sharing your video on Facebook to help boost your subs. Thank you very much, mate. It's hugely appreciated. Uh, Mark said working on base for Adrax for the Ace of Base Challenge. Nice to see somebody else taking part as well. Um, VG says only comp I would have a chance in would be Ars of Boss. The, the competitions, are, it's just a pure, um, it's a random draw, mate. It's just a, a random draw of everybody that uh, that completes the challenge and sends me a picture. doesn't matter how good or kind of, or, or what model you've done or anything like that. It's not about how good you are or, or how many you've done. It's just, did you complete the challenge? And if you did, you're in the draw. Um, Dave says, what colours are you using? I haven't really thought about it, mate. I think I'm probably going to start with a corn red base. And then we'll go with their mate. But we're going to go standard standard Deadpool colours. Um, Peter Stockdale, good evening to you, mate. Manager Hobbyist as well. He said, um, <laughs> that's a cool looking bust, said the vicar to the actress. Yes, one. Uh, Ian, H, good evening, mate. He says, is it an Eastman bust? It's, no, mate, it's, um, it's, it's a 3D printed one. Oh, it is an Eastman one. Sorry, yes. It says the name on the back. Excuse me. <coughs> it is an Eastman bust. Yeah, it says on there. So it was 3D printed for me as a gift by Christian, who's our... Uh, our cat wrangler tonight in the chat, our moderator. So yeah, it is an Eastman bust, but it is fantastic. Let me just try and if I can pull this light down a little bit, you can kind of see the detail there. It's, I mean, bear in mind it's it's resin printed. It's there's not a there's not a mark on it. It's it's beautiful, really really nice. I'm looking forward to painting that. Um, um where else are we at? Dear in a nice sip and drink. Yeah, uh, Andrew says, don't worry, I'm here. The US Capitol building is stormed by protest protesters. I think we can hit 10K. If somebody can tell all those protesters, if they just click subscribe. <laughs> I did just see that, actually. I'm being a bit flippant there. I saw it on the news there. It, it sounds like it's um, it sounds like it's quite serious over there, doesn't it? I hope everybody uh, is safe and stuff. Um, Spider Lord saying, lovely weed ram. Let's hope you get the pot. Um, to be honest, if we get to the end of the stream... <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't done it. I might still have a little uh, tipple because um, it, it's been open. It's, it's not like I'm saving it for this moment. If you like, um, where else are we at? Scott's in everything. 
don't know what everything means. Yokum says, I love Balvany double wood. Goes really well with desserts. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice tip. It was a gift from my wife, so yeah, it was very nice. Tabletop Hub, nice mate. How are you doing? He said, really wanted to take part in the base challenge, but had no idea what to do. It, all it needs to be, mate, is any mini that you're painting. Just just try and kind of just just take the base up a notch. Just do a little bit more. Like, rather than... Like, I, I don't know if I've got anything handy to show you, but I I get so used to just putting sand on and dry brushing it. So I'm trying to kind of to raise my game a little bit. So I've got things like, like, let me, uh, if I can find one. So, for example, I've got these minis here for um, for Drowned Earth. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of doing a bit with coke and stuff like that on the base and doing something a little bit different. Um, and then I've got things like the models that I'm doing for Malifaux, which you saw last week and I've, I've bought I went and bought specific bases to make them a bit more kind of nice looking and that's that's all I'm really looking for really for the basin challenge I'm not talking about people kind of coming up with some kind of work of art it's just a little bit of motivation a bit of a challenge instead of just doing what you normally do see if you can do something else see, see if you can do a little bit extra it only needs to be one model if you're doing like a uh, like an army or like a war band of 10 models or something feel free to do 10 or or feel free to just finish one and submit that it's purely just about just a bit of a challenge just a, a bit of a a bit of an easy one for the start of the year just to get people motivated talking of motivation tabletop hub if you're not already subscribed to his channel um i'm pretty sure this is right mate you've just started um or you're about to kick off something which is like a saturday morning hobby club where uh, everybody can get together and kind of uh, and paint together and stuff like that and um, please do go and check them out check out on facebook as well um we've met before we met at uk games expo last year and stuff and had spent plenty of time together in a few beers so yeah pl great guy please 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 go and check it out and um, james j said i was going to ask with the old orc man mangler and old metal spider riders and other gw 1980s goblins What's the best way to make them look like they fit in with new, bigger styles of goblins and orcs? I think potentially, mate, one way, it depends what you're going to do with them. If, you, if you're going to do them for Warhammer fantasy, like sort of like on the old um, bases and stuff, I just keep them the same, mate. But if you're going to use them for like AOS or something like that, maybe try putting a bit of coke on the base. Try, try raising the height of the models up on the base a little bit just to kind of give them a little bit more height. Um... Uh, where was that one? VG said, all good. He texted the bases and primed the Chaos Blitzball team. It's just planted a paint scheme before I slap some contrast on with number four this weekend. Nice one, mate. I've actually got today a number six that I'm breaking out for this bus with it being a little bit bigger. There's some there's some big chunks of red need to go on this. So, yeah, I'm breaking out a bit of a bigger brush. Uh, otherwise, I'll be here all day with my normal size two. Um, uh where was that one? Dave says he did a smaller version of that bust halfway through printing a 75 mil dragon. Nice, mate. I just have got my tape measure handy. This one for height is. Let's have a little look. Um, we'll go here. This one is about it's about four inches high. So it gives you an idea of the height of it. Pretty cool. Oh, do you need my finger, my finger there? Oh. Um uh, John Estill say, make models, not war. 100% mate. Stu says, uh, third day in a row with a little painting. Looking forward to seeing what you do with a Deadpool. Yeah, that's the way to do it, mate. Little, little and often's the way. Uh, Stu says, it's the start of a civil war. I tell you what, we are living in some strange times at the moment. Um, <laughs> Scott says, sorry, he should have said evening, pal. <laughs> uh, no worries, mate. Table to hope, speaking of civil wars, anyone seen Warlord's 15 mil civil war range they just announced? How's that for a segue? Um, I I haven't seen them yet, but I've heard about them being a little bit. Um, I think a bit of controversy over the size, and I think um, Lord Mids, I've got a bit of a dilemma with something. I have two copies of three sculpts of a model. I can only take a maximum of three in a crew. Do I paint one of each sculpt, or do I do two of a sculpt and one of a sculpt? So you've got two copies of three sculpts. Um, I would personally paint one of each sculpt, and then it's easy to see what which one is on the table. That's how I would do it. Um, yeah, Ian H is saying there about the scale not being a standard. Yeah, I, I, I've heard that as well, mate. Jeff Higgin, hello to you, mate. Um, James is saying for, for new AOS. Yeah, I'd, I'd potentially lift lift them up a little bit, give them a bit more of an interesting base, and give them a little bit of height, mate. Um, 
Yeah, David's saying go bigger with the brush. <laughs> Do I just get like something, something like this? <laughs> just start uh, the size of that one. Just, just start painting it on. I've got a few bigger brushes that I've used for things like um, putting washes and stuff onto um, onto like terrain and things. I've got like these kind of like I put it from my face. So you can see it there. These kind of bigger stuff and that. It's not not exactly what I'm going to use for painting this with. Um, um, Vijay saying there, number six, whoop, big brushes for the win, total convert. I literally bought a pack of these not too long ago, which were really cheap Amazon brushes. I wanted them for things like using for washers, and um, and I wanted a few bigger size brushes, that was all. Uh, so I, I'm obviously not worried about them being the, the best quality ones when I'm kind of slapping down big base coats and stuff. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how they go. They've, been, they've performed all right so much so far, but I haven't used them a lot, if I'm being honest. Um... Uh, Andrew Fairbanks, good evening, mate. He's saying 2021, currently holding 2020's beer. You're not wrong, mate. Jimmy Newton, hello, good evening to you, mate. Uh, Tabletop Hope saying the 15 mil doesn't appeal to me, but I, I did see some 2 mil Napoleonic miniatures the other day. I think it was on Reddit and it blew my mind. They were on our Facebook group, mate. I think they were Steve Evans. He's been painting them. They were, I couldn't, you realised how small you were, how small they were when you saw the thickness of the bases were almost bigger than the, uh, the height of the minis. Um, Lord Mainz, he posted a picture on the Patreon group they do count as the same model but didn't before uh, and then saying you need a bigger brush uh, Vigi saying I love the triangle handle it's great for those of us with big hands and fingers I, to be honest mate it doesn't doesn't bother me because I tend to hold I tend to hold quite close down to the ferrule I get much more kind of like control like that so actually being the uh, being the, the kind of the bigger ones the, the triangular ones doesn't really kind of help me that much to be fair that's just the way I hold them I think um, Spider Lord saying I got those same brushes, they do the job. Yeah, they're, they're cheap enough, mate. They're, they're just kind of the great workhorse stuff for, for like I say, like washes and bits and pieces. Um, as long as the point is good, you can get some detail with a number six. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not planning to do it with these cheap brushes, though, to be fair. Um, yeah, Team Top saying, was it Steve? Yeah, they weren't really. Yeah, it was Steve, mate. Scott Longworth says, so this is the start of you getting the 3D printer. I, you know, I've toyed with it for, for a long, long time. Christian sent me this, and he also. I've got the base prime on this as well. Let me get this one under the camera. He sent me two as a gift for Christmas, which was very, very kind of the lad. Um, and this is the other one, the, the Hulk model as well. Um, so I've stuck, stuck it all together. I've put a little bit of kind of uh, filler in some of the joins. And then uh, I'm going to paint it separate from the base and then stick it to the base afterwards. But I'm looking forward to doing that as well. That one needs a Zenithal prime over it. I was letting that first prime kind of set first um this one needs a zenithal prime over it as well but yeah we'll we'll get to that at some point uh not sure if it'll come on, come on the stream that one but uh i, I said i said that about uh about deadpool as well to be fair um vg says two mil jesus <laughs> yeah they were small mate jamie's in as well hello from texas he said their uh, wife surprised me with a gw skull pack we'll be up my war cry and necromunda bases with them they were a great idea mate, for that kind of stuff um, and Dave says that's an awesome sculpt. Any idea who did it? I'm no. Actually, it might. It has got something written on the base. It says uh, Thomas Davies. The Davies, I think it says three three D of Tom dot com is what sculpted into the base. So yeah, that that might uh, might give you a bit of a a bit of an idea. Uh, Connor says hello again. Hello to you too, Connor. All right, I'm going to quickly check my numbers. I might have to break the whiskey out. You never know. I'm going to have a quick check. Oh, let's just say it's just increased by four subscribers while we've been chatting. So we're close. We're close, folks. We might do it tonight. We might not. But I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to get on and have a little bit of painting. So I've got, I've, I got this for Christmas off my little boy. This was my uh, my little Christmas gift, my Star Wars water thing. I'm trying to stay healthy this year. We got locked down. I was going to do dry January and stuff and eat healthy and get exercising. Gyms are closed. The weather's awful. All that kind of stuff. So I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to cut back on the beer. I'm, my, my New Year's resolution is to drink more whiskey and smoke more cigars because they just chill me out. I just get to relax and time slips by. I can't do anything else while I'm doing that. So yeah, I am, I'm going to just I'm gonna drink more water and generally try and stay a bit healthier. So that is certainly helping me at the moment. Right, and then I've got my Army Painter wet palette as well, which is going well so far. 
Andrew saying subbed with my alt. Please, thank you very much, mate. But don't don't worry about subscribing with another with another kind of email address or something like that. Because to be fair, it it doesn't really help me in the long run. Not unless you're going to watch the video twice on on both um on both um accounts. Um, I'd rather just get I'd rather just get there under my own steam kind of thing. Don't worry about it. I'm close enough that it doesn't make much difference. But I, I do I do appreciate the support and the help. Right, let's get a bit of corn red. I think we'll get that down as the base coat. And then we'll we'll light up, we'll lighten it up with things like probably my fist and red. Oh, actually, I wonder. No, I need to go with like a base paint. I think otherwise it'll, it's going to be too, it's going to be too um, thin. Otherwise, it'll take me all week to 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 layer it up. Right. Right. Let's make sure that's properly mixed. And then let's get some paint onto. Um, Mr. Mr. Weird. Right. I don't know if you folks do this, but I've got like these basically shitty old brushes that I just use for getting paint out of the pots onto my wet palette or on, onto my palette at all, actually, to be fair. Um, I don't know if anybody else does that or if they. That way you don't wreck your good brushes. He says he's using the cheapest brush that he just that he's ever bought. Right, let's get a little bit of. Bit of water on here, mix it up. And thin it down a bit. Is it just me? Or has the chat just suddenly come to a to a halt there? That was it. Ah, thank you. No need for old brushes to move paint when you move your citadel to droppers. Um I, I I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of dropper bottles, mate, if I'm perfectly honest. I like to be able to get in with a with a dry brush and stuff like that. Um and I also like uh, I like to be able to kind of uh, I like the satisfaction of cleaning the tops. If I'm honest, I, I just I, I tried a long time ago. I tried to, to, to transfer everything to dropper bottles, and I just uh, I couldn't be bothered with it. Um, thank you very much, Christian, for just sharing that link there. That was awesome, mate. Do you know what it is? There's a lot of there's a lot of chat just jumped in there that wasn't there a second ago. Um, yeah, Christian sharing that one. Scott saying 10k dance. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure if we're gonna get there, mate. But we'll we'll, we'll just play it by ear. We'll see how it goes. Uh, VG says different strokes. I prefer them and found the experience of moving them quite zen. I just found that it was just it was just messy. It was like, even with like I, I bought even bought little funnels and to, to go with the dropper bottles as well, and I just felt it was just more it was more thought on than it was worth. So, but yeah, you're right. Each to their own. Everybody's got a uh, everybody's got to do what everybody enjoys doing. So let me just uh, I will start with these masks. I think so. There we go. We. we there you go, Christian. We've actually got some paint on him now. So, what's everybody up to then? How are you? Um, how many of you are kind of? You still managing to get to work and stuff? Are you working from home? Are your kids being uh, home from school now? My little one's um, at nursery because he's he's four. But um, however, because the nursery he goes to is connected to a primary school they've closed the nursery now as well so i'm in the same boat as all of you whose whose children's been uh been sent home from school so now it's looking like at least until kind of april time we're going to be uh trying to balance that with my wife again like we did in the lockdown last year so i'm going to try and um we're just going to have to make it work between us really because i'm i've got the bit between my teeth when it comes to kind of motivation for the channel and stuff um, so I intend to not, not kind of let up on the on the amount of content I've got planned, um, especially while I'm kind of motivated as well. So I'm going to try and just keep the pressure on, uh, and if that means working late in the evenings or working weekends and stuff, then uh, then so be it. Unfortunately, we ain't got a lot of choice. So. I don't know why I'm trying to go too careful with this to be fair, they're gonna be black inside there, so 
I'm so not used to painting with a bigger brush. Um, uh, Lord Maiden says, I'm busy painting with the enthusiasm with this model dropped and picked up again, but dropped today. Just take a break, mate. Just chill with it. Don't worry, it'll come back. Scott says, I use Vallejo, so almost all mine are already in dropper bottles. Yeah, I, I mean, I've got some Vallejo paints, and I think they're, I think they're absolute quality Vallejo. Um, and I've, but I've said this before, I just, um, they're not easy to just pick up locally. Um, the GW ones are, and that's why I've always just continued with them. Um, and, and I'm just used to them now. I know how to thin them for my airbrush. Um, I'm just, I just aren't comfortable with them. It's not through any loyalty or any kind of fanboyism or anything like that. They're just easy to replace when I run out. So if I, if I run short, it's kind of un unexpectedly. I can nip to a local shop and kind of refill them quickly. So, um, right. Um, yeah, VG, uh, um, that was this one. Rob's busy building. Nice one, mate. Uh, VG said, I must have pretty steady hands. I was able to pour the thin Citadel paint from the pots into the droppers without a funnel. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, mate, even even that I would find... When I say messy, I just mean, like, yeah, like, using the funnel and stuff like that. Just just kind of... It's just one more thing to uh, to have to clean up kind of thing. So... I just... Um, it's just time-consuming. Like, I've got... Jesus. Probably 200-and-odd paints here. Um... The idea of just spent, like wasting a whole day putting them into dropper bottles just doesn't fill me full of excitement. Um, for the for the for the small benefit I would I would gain. So this feels really weird painting with a big brush. Like I said, like I said before, I'm I'm not used to it. Um, but um, it's a new experience. Um, um, Peter's doing some uni work at home. Nice one, Peter. Um, uh, Ian says, in 2020, we had nearly six months of pretty hard lockdown. Yeah, it's uh, it's not a lot of fun, mate, is it? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's tough on the kids as well, especially with like that. My oldest lads as well are due to set their A-levels this year, so so they're not, uh, obviously their exams have been cancelled. They haven't got a clue what's going on. Like one of my lads was planning on going away for university um, to study law, and now he's considering potentially sort of um, deferring it for a year just because he, he doesn't want to go to university and not experience university. Do you know what I mean? Like you only get to do it once kind of thing, so... He's thinking about potentially deferring for a year just so to give things time to calm down and so he can actually have some kind of university experience. And I don't blame him. I, I'd probably advise him to do the same thing. My other son's planning on going to a local university to study. Um, so I think he's kind of less concerned about it, but it's just like, I feel sorry for the young for young kids and that these days. Obviously, like everybody, everybody's in a bit of a, a shitty situation, but I think it's just like when, you, when you're young, you only get those experiences once. Um, and yeah, like, like it was their 18th birthday not too long ago. I've got uh, their twins. Um, and we haven't even been able to go for a beer yet together. Like, obviously, we've had a couple of like sort of bottles over. Like, it came over at Christmas and we had a few bottles and stuff. Um, but unfortunately, because they're now 18, I can't see them anymore. So because they were because they were under 18 before, they were classed as kind of like shared shared responsibility with me and my ex-wife. Uh, now, because they're 18, they're, they're classed as adults, so I, I don't get to see them now through lockdown. So it's a bit of a shame. It's just, it feels really weird. Um, anyway, enough of that. We're on a positive, we're on a positive kick. We're trying to stay, stay motivated and keep at it. I'm not, I'm determined not to let it get me down this time. Because I was, I didn't enjoy it at all last time. Um... Let's have a look. Um, Scott said, I can't make toilet rolls at home, so unfortunately I have to go to work. But I'm in for it one hour tomorrow with the mill manager and then off until the 11th. Ah, interesting, mate. Yeah, I, I don't know what happens with stuff like that. So obviously, I, I know, well, you'll be classed as a key worker, but like, I was trying to think, if you're like a bricklayer or something like that, 
Is that classed as like a key worker? Like for your kids to be to be able to go to school, or like, are you just meant to like how do you how do you cope with it? Like like a mate of mine basically like works works in a in a shop doing online orders, and like um and and that's not like um that's not classed as essential um like a key worker type thing. So is he meant to just give up his job and and stay at home with his two kids? It's it's a it's a funny situation. Um, but anyway, hobbies, miniatures, geeky stuff, beer, wines, <laughs> food. Let's get back to our normal happy stuff. Um, VG says the Dr. Tabletop's drop tops are fantastic for GW contrast pots. Just remove the top and pop it on. Yeah, I saw them, mate. They look pretty cool, actually. It would. It, I would like to see GW actually kind of almost try and sort of get the patent for that. And do it for future um, for future paints, but um, yeah, it's I I think they're a really good idea. One thing I will say about GW paints is, for, for all they're a bit more expensive, and you might get a little bit less in the actual pots, um, they do tend to be a bit thicker. So you thin them down a hell of a lot. I think if I thin them down to a to like a normal consistency that I would paint with. I wonder just how much paint I actually get in a pot, because they're a lot they're a lot thicker than um, than things like army paint and stuff, for example. So I've got no idea. It might make absolutely no difference, but as a uh, as a comparison, it would be quite a nice thing to do just to just to test it. I think. Um. um Tanuka D said, I managed to paint two traffic lights for Crisis Protocol in between homeschooling on my day off. you got to get it get it while you can, mate, can't you? Uh, John Estill says, just before lockdown, I found Northeast Model Centre, which is mainly scale models and RC cars, but has every paint imaginable. It's only about two miles away. Yeah, I used to live in Durham, mate. I used to live in um, in Newton Hall. And um, the, no the Northeast Model Centre was there back then. I don't think it was quite so big back in those days. But, um, yeah, it's not a bad one. The problem for me is it's... It's a it's a bit of a drive away from where I am. I have to pay for for the time tunnel both ways. Um, so sort of, so by the time I do all that, I might as well just go to the to, just go to Metro Centre and go to Games Workshop. So it um, it doesn't save me like especially like if if I'm only buying like a few paints or just topping up a couple of bits. Like it costs me as much to kind of to get there and back as it does for a pot of paint. So I'm not really saving anything. And even if I if I order stuff online. Um, and, and be that Games Workshop paints or any other brand, by the time I pay the delivery for them, I'm not saving any money. So I might as well, uh, I might as well just, just sort of buy them local and uh, just pick them up from Games Workshop. Um, or if I'm going into Newcastle for anything else, I have to pay for parking obviously in Newcastle, but uh, um, there's a couple of shops in town sell, uh, sell Games Workshop paints as well, so. But yeah, it's just it's just convenience for me, mate. That's why I've always just kind of stuck with them. I've picked things up over the years, so I've got like stuff from Vallejo, I've got stuff from P3. Um I've got some foundry stuff, I've got some army painter stuff, but generally um I've just I've kept with this this range now. So yeah. Well, we're getting some colour on it. Uh, Scott says, I do have Citadel paints, but prefer the colour choices you get with Vallejo. 50 shades of green. Yeah, I don't really kind of... I the, the way I paint, I, I don't tend to kind of like make it like sort of mega realistic. I tend to paint more with kind of like sort of quite stark contrast. So actually not, not having 30 different shades of red isn't a... Thirty different shades of green. Well, that's not not really a problem. I don't kind of tend to paint ultra realistic or sort of wet blends or any of that type of stuff. I mean, as you saw last week when I was painting, it was pretty much base coat and a wash, um, and I was done. So, right, I've got a little reference picture here as well in the background just to to make sure I'm painting the right bits red. So we'll get in now and do round the round the collar. I was just checking my numbers there as well. Oh, 
Yeah, let's not uh, let's not get excited. Oh shit, I forgot what I, I forgot what paint I was meant to be painting now. That's right, I'm painting around the collar there. Um, so we'll get in here. That is on camera, isn't it? Yeah. I had this horrible feeling I was just kind of in a world of my own. Not not painting on camera like I normally do. At least with the size of this, folks. <laughs> there's always something on the camera. Rather than uh, rather than when I'm painting something quite small. I'll show you what I've been up to as well. I did I did a little bit on Monday before I started the live stream. A little bit more work on my Malfo stuff as well. So I'll show you where I'm up to with that. Um, as it goes on. But yeah, this is... I must admit, mate, I've never painted anything this size before. I got, I bought some um, Mantic Three Up fantasy figures years and years ago. Never did anything with them. They're, they're still in boxes in the garage. And um, from the Kings of War range, um, and I did keep threatening to kind of to get them out and and kind of paint them at some point. But the difference is, is I think because they're Three Ups, like obviously the details designed for it to be shrunken down. Um, so it doesn't have the level of detail as something like this would. This is this is the reason, as Scott was saying before, is that you get into 3D printing. This is the reason I would buy a 3D printer. I, I think I'd find it useful to do bits and pieces of stuff for miniatures and things. But I think primarily it, it would be to do those those big Hulk models and the, the dragons and the, the really impressive pieces, just more from a from a hobby point of view itself is for something to do. Um so this is a nice little test for me if I if I enjoy this as much as I think I will, as much as I am now, um, that might tip me over the edge. Christian, did I see that you were said you were getting a, um, a new three D printer delivered, mate? What did you decide to go for? Did you go for a Saturn, or have you gone for a different brand? Or um, uh, where are we up to here? Stu, since uh, same for me, Jimmy Newton, day two nine six of working from home, uh, and I'm now changing to a working from home contract. Yeah, my, my wife's worked from home from before the lockdown started to be fair to be fair um but she works in sales and, and had a, a at-home contract to start with for all she never ever sort of was at home she was always traveling to see customers or in the office and stuff and um, she's she's been at home the entire time as well so, um zoom calls and stuff and that's the thing like, i mean we we got a really um quite comprehensive like um timetable of stuff to 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 kind of take Jackson through and it literally starts at like nine o'clock in the morning all the way through to three o'clock in the afternoon and um, with a half hour lunch break and it's like how how are you supposed to do that while you're while you're trying to hold down a job as well like the kind of work that I do like like that sounds put a wonky but like creative stuff you can't really just do like half an hour and like and dive back out you end up like kind of getting into a headspace where you're where I'm filming something, or I'm writing a script for a video, or I'm painting something, or I'm doing a tutorial. That kind of stuff just, like, it takes time, and you need to, once the kind of, like, the flow comes, you've got to kind of go with it. So for me, I either just have to not not do it at all, um, or my wife has to cover it, basically. And then when it comes to her job, she's obviously, um, she's got meetings, she's got, like, um, customers that, that want to ring up and want to discuss stuff, and, and unfortunately, like, like um, homeschooling and stuff doesn't doesn't really uh, doesn't revolve around her timetable either, so it's it's quite difficult. I and mean, we're we're by no means sort of the only people that this is the case of. There's people everywhere that's obviously able to deal with this, but I can I can only speak from my own personal kind of experience. But it just feels uh, it just feels very very difficult, and I think this time it could. It could be equally as long as last time, unfortunately, if, if the news is correct. Um, Spyro said, I'd rather spend the time painting. Yeah, I'm the same. I think we're talking about the dropper bottles and stuff and that. Yeah, I was the same. I, I, I just, I don't, like, the benefit, that, and don't get me wrong, I think dropper bottles are better than like sort of um, bot, um, like pots with caps. I definitely think that's the case. But, but the, the benefit in what it gives me versus the time it would take me to get to that stage I just um, I just think it's like a like a cost benefit analysis type thing by the time I pay, uh, buy loads of um, dropper bottles and then the time it takes to to fill them up I just don't think it's worth it for me personally 
but yeah like i say that's that's me me personally if you've done it if you enjoyed doing it if it was if it was a common experience then all power to you right let me just see where else this needs to go right the kind of the armor panels on the chest need to be red as well Oh. We've hit the 10k force. I did. I did a little cheeky little check there. We're now over the 10k. We're at 10,003 subscribers. So I'm just going to wash my brush a second while I pour myself a whiskey, and uh, have a little celebrate. Let me just uh, scroll down a bit here. Um, Lord Ben says it's your number the same as what we're seeing. That was that was about a minute ago. I have just seen it. Yeah. Thank you very much, folks. I would scream and shout, but my little one's asleep next door. <laughs> Let me, uh... I'm sure there was probably some uh, jiggery-pokery of extra accounts there, but uh, thank you very much. Let me just, uh... Let's start as we mean to go on here. Let's, let's just flick back here. Let me get the... That's it. We'll make we'll make it a big one. Eh? We'll make it a big one. Cheers, folks. We'll pop that there. This won't be the last one, so um, we'll pop that there for now. We've <laughs> thrown it around now. Thank you so much to every single one of you who've supported me to get to this point. I never ever like. I never dreamed that this would ever get to 10,000. It was just, David Bakai, thank you so much for the donation, mate, as well. Um, it says fist bump on the little picture. Um, I know, when I first started, I think like getting to like, I, I think getting to 100 subscribers felt out of reach. And then when I quickly got to like 200 with like all of the, the Walking Dead community, really, um, it blew me away. And, and, and then getting to 1,000 felt like a massive, like a huge, huge hurdle. Um, but 10 just felt like out of reach if I'm honest and the reason it feels out of reach is there's nobody really kind of does the kind of content that I do and seems to succeed like it's I, I do it because I love it it was never about trying to kind of to be a big channel or anything like that but I just I never saw anybody getting more than a couple of thousand of subscribers and it just they, they seem to die away or they seem to give up so 10,000 just felt like like un, un, like un, unrealistic really so um yeah, cheers, folks. Here's to you. Thank you. Jim's Bray just comes in there. Evening. He says, oh, shit, 10K. Legend. Thank you very much. <laughs> Quick before he notices, pop the Prosecco behind him. <laughs> Thought you might have been creeping in there. Did I miss the dance? No, I've not danced yet, mate. I am literally just having my little tipple here first. That is amazing. I never, I didn't, I... I think when we when we came on tonight, I actually I was at nine thousand nine hundred and ninety, and I thought ah, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be close. I'm sure there'll be a little bit of air. Uh, there might have been a bit of fudging to get me over the line there from a few of you, but uh, yeah, thank you very very much, folks. I guess yeah, it's time for the dance, isn't it? I, I haven't rehearsed anything, mind. Um, <laughs> as you know, I'm not a dancer, and the camera's too close now, so I'll have to just like. We'll have to just boogie away there, and I'm sure you're all capturing this, and it'll come back to haunt me. <laughs> we'll do, we'll do, we'll do the um, the happy dance. Somebody's saying, does it tell you the name of the 10k subscriber? It doesn't, mate. Actually, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. Uh, if it did, I would, uh, I'd, I, I, I would, I would, I would come and give them a big kiss, <laughs> a big Corona kiss. I, I've got no idea, mate. Um, yeah, we'll. You saw the official 10k dance. Uh, we'll we'll do something a bit fun. I make a bit of a video or something like that, and do something a little bit different. But uh, <laughs> she was saying, "Don't give up your day job." I, I was never I was never paid to be a dancer, mate. That's for sure. But yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. So, officially, the sixth of January was when I did it, which means I was six days short of hitting it last year. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, it, it I, just. Yeah, but, uh, oh. 
<laughs> I'm sure you've just <laughs> just saw it, just saw from the corner of the screen there, Luke. Do you want to come and say hello? Yeah, not. <laughs> <laughs> Says Connor, I just donated there as well. Thank you very much, mate. Says congratulations on the 10k. Your stuff keeps me in the hobby. Keep going. Thank you. I have got no intention of stopping, mate. It pays the bills now, so thank you very much. I'm, I'm going to be here. Uh, I'm double parked now. I'm going to be half cut tonight. Excuse me. Um, oh, everybody's saying boogie. Uh, Rob says his wife says happy feet, and James says we're here getting there, Lou. Yes, that's it. Oh, um, Peter says someone clip that dance and make it the new Rick Roll. There's the donation from Connor. It come up on my screen first. Thank you very, very much, Connor. Um, Pete says it's nice that Lou's there to witness it. It is, mate. It is. And we were just talking yesterday, actually, because it, because it's been catching up so fast. Like I see, I've been doing sort of like between between twenty and fifty subscribers a day for about the last for about the last week and a half now. It just and, and views have really taken off. It just it feels like I'm on a bit of an upward climb at the minute. It'll probably level off and it'll probably dip back down, and then something else will come along and kick it on again. But um, we were just sitting chatting, and it was like. So what I'm going to do to celebrate? Like, like, I feel like I should treat myself or something like that. I've got, I've got no idea what, what to do about it. How do we celebrate as a couple? We can't go for a meal. We can't go for a drink. We'll have to just try and make uh, make the most of it at home, I think. Um, Scott Latham. Hello, mate. He says, congrats, Andy. No fudge here. Honest. <laughs> Love the Deadpool bust. I have an orc bust along with my squid mob brush kickstart. That orc bust is beautiful, mate. Adam says, did I miss the dance? You might have done, mate. I don't know. You, no, actually, 9.15. You might, might have just missed it. Glenn says, yeah, will GW give you free stuff now? I've got no intention of asking them, mate, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, I just, I, I feel personally that... <laughs> excuse me, I've got wind off the Prosecco now. Um, I feel personally that I don't buy a lot of GW stuff, so I don't want to feel obliged to review the stuff that they send me if it's not something I would necessarily like buy myself. James Breer, thank you very much. <laughs> 10,000 people. 10,000 people clicked subscribe buttons. What on earth were they thinking? Why on earth would they do that? Um, so yeah, sorry, going back to the GW thing, I, I just, I, I have no intention of asking them. If they contact me, they contact me, but I think I'd rather just kind of stay, stay independent away from it, really. I don't want to feel like I don't. Have, there's so many people get free GW stuff that it just doesn't feel all that kind of beneficial, really. But who knows? Who knows? If it happens, it happens. But I, I won't be requesting it from them. Uh, Robert Zunk just donated as well. There he says, "Here you go, happy feet." <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. All the tens coming in now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the tasty brain drinks is the dancing warrants alike. Nice one. Um, where were we up to there now? Tim Kelly says, oh, that's nice. Uh, Spylos says, Glen Livid, Captain's Reserve for me. Cheers, mate. Con I'll, bit, bit of whiskey and Prosecco. This is going to be a... This is go I'm, I might not be doing too much pain tonight. Now this might make a right mess. Uh, um, where else are we at? Should I unsubscribe and resub so you have to do it again? That'll, that'll, everybody just unsubscribe now. That, that, will be a, that will be pain. At least this is, this is, um, this is proof I got there anyway. Um, Scott said, I'm looking for busts to print now. My mini factory, I think, mate, is where this one is from. Um, <laughs> uh, VG saying, 10K is supposed to be the magic number for free GW stuff. Yeah, I think I think they, they kind of, they set that number just to kind of weed out every Tom, Dick and Harry that asks. But I think certain channels get it for less. Um, and some channels just get, have more and, and don't get it. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not in any particular rush for it. It doesn't. I don't want to end up just getting like a load of stuff sent to me that, like what like what am I meant to do with like a load of games that are like that I just I'm not interested in, but I I'd feel obliged to have to make content about it. I'm not really sure if I want to do that, so I I think it's not something I have to decide on now. But my, my good feeling is I, I wouldn't I probably wouldn't get involved with it. I'd I'd rather buy the stuff I was interested in when it comes to stuff like that. This channel's always been about like promoting like other games and stuff like that as well as gw stuff when i'm interested in it but like of all the other stuff that's out there and i, and I don't want to end up just becoming a a channel that just constantly shows like like a stream of free stuff that they send me kind of thing which which further pushes out other companies if i'm honest um 
<laughs> Peter says, 5,000 of those people thought this was a blackjack channel and never, <laughs> never left. To be honest, mate, I get to see how many people unsubscribe, and you'd be surprised. if I wonder if I can find it now, the number. Let me see if I can find in my analytics how many people have unsubscribed from my channel since I started it. Um, you'd be surprised how many, so how many sub like, subscribers I've had in total over time. So if I go to analytics, I think I can see it through subscribers. Let me see if I can there. Uh, there used to be a way that you could you could see how many subscribers that you'd had over time. Um, I wonder if I, I don't know if I can see it from here. Um, reach is it overview subscribers? Um, I'm having to make this a little bit bigger on the screen. Uh, but I, I just want I want to explain to you basically just. I, I might have 10,000 all at one time, but I've like there's a lot of people have subscribed and then unsubscribed over time. VJ, thank you very much for the uh, the 10,000 Pacific pesos. <laughs> Cheers, mate. That's really appreciated. Um, I'm trying to see where it is now. I think they've they've changed all of the stuff, so it's harder to see. Yeah, uh, uh, it's harder to see uh, the the details behind it now. Uh, oh, here we it, it, lifetime. Let's have a look. Does it tell you here? I'll see more. It might be. I'll see if I can see it. Um, right. Uh, does it? Does it tell me? Um, subscribers. Oh, I. 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 Have to, I, I um, subscription status. Is that one? Not subscribed. Subscribed. No. I. I'll, I'll have to try. I'll have to try to. Um, I'll have to try and. Do some digging and see if I can find the number for you. But I've probably I've probably had more people unsubscribe than I have than I have currently have as subscribers, which is the weird bit. Um, Paul Inman, good evening, mate. He said, uh, "Congratulations, I'm torturing you with hot vimto because I have a chest infection. And I'm on antibiotics." I, I tell you, I, I do like a, a, a hot black currant drink, mate. You're, you're in good taste there. Uh, VJ says, um, "If you turn it down, just don't make a video about it." <laughs> yeah, that's that's a bit clickbait. You know, let's let's be fair. Who would do that? Um, um, Marcus is saying that they did for the happy dance. Yeah, that's, that's probably it, mate. That's probably exactly it. Um, where else are we up to here? Uh, Christian saying check out Eastman on my Infinity Factory. Marcus saying proper northerner drinking a whiskey prosecco shanty. <laughs> This is very really quickly becoming the Alcoholics Anonymous channel, isn't it? Um, Peter says, when you have to do it, but you don't want to, and then you're... Um, when you have to do it, but you don't want to, and you're back at your regular job. Yeah, I don't, I'll tell you what, mate. Uh, yeah, exactly. Sorry, that was it when we talked about doing that. When you, when you have to do it, but you don't want to. If anybody follows um, Stu McMurtry, thank you very much, mate, donating as well for the super chat. Um, very, very kind. Um, I think it was um, Miniac. Did a, did a video a while ago about how he obviously does this full time and he's he's constantly basically like looking for for um uh, sponsors and stuff like that and he ended up doing like a load of stuff that he just wasn't interested in it's one of the reasons i wanted to kind of set this channel up to be funded by by patreon and and and, and then subsidized by ad revenue and stuff in the background as well was because it, it allows me to, to to focus on just the stuff that i'm interested in on just the stuff that pe people want to see um it's um, it just it, and I and I think once that's the <laughs> Adam Edgar donated as well. Well done, mate. Even if the regulars fudged it, had to go back and watch the dance. Yeah, mate, I was, I think I was um, I was seven. I was seven short, mate. I was seven short, so it looks like it might have it might have been edged over the line, but that'll that'll soon uh, that'll soon clear itself up in the next day. Um, yeah. So, but so get back to that. What I was just saying there, Miniac was basically saying that he's he's at change what he does now to try and uh to try and get back to enjoying it. I think he got to a point where he just wasn't enjoying it so much now. Um Tasty Brindrin says now let's get working on twenty thousand. I think I've said before me, I'm I, the, the subscriber number's never really been a big driver for me. It's just a measure of like growth. Peter Nicholas has donated as well, thank you. He says um many congratulations mate now we're not marginal. No <laughs> no it's not marginal now mate. Um 
Yeah, it's not, it's never it's a it's a measurement of I guess of of interest around the channel if I can put it that way, but it like it doesn't I, c I could have 10 million subscribers, but it doesn't mean that everything's financially viable or any of that kind of stuff. So it's a bit of a vanity number. I've said that before, but it, it's amazing to kind of just to have those little milestones to reach and stuff. Um, after this, now it's my next goal is just to, just to make sure that I can I can make this channel um, sort of financially viable for the future. I, I've, I've bought myself some time to be able to do that, but by by going full time and saving up some money in the background and and lockdown has helped to, to reduce my outgoings and stuff as well and the family's outgoings so yeah it's so far so good but like in a year's time will, will be the test and then, and then it and then in two years time and and kind of going forward so we'll see how it goes but i, I, I couldn't be happier thank you so much folks um Fiji says, now I hope they open my nightclub next week so I can pay for that. <laughs> yes, mate, I hope they open your nightclubs as well. Um, um, <laughs> Lord Mate says, I keep trying. He's been referred to as a mascot. Nice one, mate. Uh, Christian, just sharing the link there. If you're shopping for any new hobby supplies, don't forget the Goblin Gaming link. It really does help me out, folks. I appreciate it. I'll tell you exactly how much I get. I'm, I'm being completely honest about it. I get 5% commission, basically. If you buy something from Goblin Gaming and you spend, uh, let's say, £100, I make £5. That's, that's how it works with Goblin Gaming and my affiliate link. If you shop through my link, I make 5% commission. So, as you can imagine, if you even if you just buy in kind of bits of paints and stuff like that, it all adds up, and, and it's all that stuff in the background um, that basically just helps to top up my kind of my, my monthly my monthly wages, basically. Um, <laughs> Vision, yeah, who would do that? Um, Warwick says, grats on the 10K subs. I've heard some places, as far as any analytics go, that having subs that never actually watch your videos can be worse off than not having subs. Not sure on that, but I can see how maybe. Essentially, mate, what it, what it does is, is basically, YouTube will send out a new video to so many of your subscribers and if those subscribers don't click on the video to watch it it thinks that your channel's not very popular anymore so it stops sending them out so if you have lots of subscribers like a lot of people when they first start out they do this like sub for sub thing where if you sub to me i'll sub to you and we'll, we'll all grow together kind of thing but then they never watch each other's channels that can be quite harmful the odd kind of two or three or whatever it is is not going to make a hit of a difference really but if, if it was in huge numbers um eventually it can it can drive a it can drive a channel down over over the long time um james says my father and i got battered once while cooking on christmas day drinking champagne cocktails champagne and brandy but we'll, we'll see how the mixture of champagne and, and whiskey goes down mate um oh adam says it still counts it does count mate um lord maiden oh uh, Lord Maiden says, Tasty Brain Drain, I said about binging my, uh, uh, Marcus is saying, 20 let's go, <laughs> 20 let's go for 50, why, Adam says, why not 100, I honestly, I, I, I'd be surprised, I'd be surprised, Th this kind of channel is not mass appeal, like, it, like, <laughs> I, I'm personally, not everybody's cup of tea, I, I know that, I don't talk about the big games all the time, I talk about, like, the softer side of the hobby, things like motivation, and I talk about, like, um, sort of community and about the theme of games and not about the competitive side so i appreciate this is not a channel like a, not a mass market channel but i enjoy it and and i assume the people that watch it enjoy it as well uh, and as long as that as long as that is enough to kind of to keep the wheel turning i, I saw a fantastic quote today about about like making money and stuff and it says to me but i'm not trying to make money to pay up to pay off my house and buy a nice car and all this kind of stuff. I'm trying to make money to buy to buy myself um, the ability to not worry about money, and that and that's kind of I would say that's kind of what I'm doing. Steve Evans, thank you so much, mate. Says congratulations. Here's to following your dreams. Yeah, it's funny because I think this whole pandemic thing over the last kind of twelve months as well. I think if I hadn't already kind of made my mind up that I was going for it, it probably might have knocked me kind of like knocked my confidence a bit about like oh is, is now the right time to be doing it like there's there's never a, a good time or a bad time to st i think the quote is basically there's never a bad time to start a good business um but i think the the, 
the stability of having a full-time job no matter how much i hated it in the current climate might have like might have made me second guess it so it, it it's kind of like it's the planet aligning for it all to happen at the right time otherwise potentially i might i might not have done it um um where was this up to um <laughs> Titty Brindrin says, well, yeah, we're going for 50,000 too, but let's not focus on the next goal. Spider Lord says, thanks for the transparency, Andy. I like Goblin Game, and I presume the affiliate link works from a bookmark. It does, mate. As long as, long as you copy the, the one that's either in my Facebook group or the one that's in any of my videos, if you copy that bookmark and save it whenever you click on it, it, it will remember that you're coming through my affiliate link. It's the same with Amazon as well. The Amazon link that, um, that Christian sometimes shares and the ones that in my videos and stuff. Um, if you shop through that as well, the way the the way the Amazon affiliate link works, and, I, and I'll be honest with that kind of stuff, um, there's two different kind of things. One is basically you get a commission, and the way Amazon do it is it depends what you buy on how much they kind of give you as a commission. So some things that people buy, I'll get one percent commission. Some things people buy, I'll get up to like five or six percent commission. I think they're like high ticket items. Like if people are buying like. I don't know, like, I don't know, like a ride on lawnmower or something from from Amazon. That You tend to get, like, sort of a higher percentage and stuff. Um, but then there's other things called bounties. And bounties pay me a one-off payment if somebody takes out an Amazon Prime subscription, if some uh, through my link, if somebody, um, if somebody takes a free Audible, like a month's free Audible trial, and they do it through my link, I get a one-off payment. If they do a, like a Kindle Unlimited subscription, you, or you want to try it for, for free for a month, then I get, a, um, I think I get like three quid or something like that for that kind of stuff. So that, that th those are other ways in the background that don't cost you any money to help. Um, and if you're shopping there anyway, and you do it through my link, it kind of helps me. And, and this is what I mean about, like, in order to make this financially viable for me, I have like different streams of income. So there's Patreon, there's ad revenue, there's donations through the stream like this. There's Amazon affiliate links. They're selling the t-shirts and the merchandise and stuff like that. There is the Goblin Gaming stuff. All of these things is like, like five pound here and 10 pound there. It might not seem like a whole lot, but when you add them all together, it, it all helps me to have a, a semi, a semi regular income really. And that's, that's all I'm trying to do basically. Um, James is saying, what whiskey are you on, sir? Um, it is, oh, try not to knock my, my chair. It is this one, mate, which is um, single, Scot single malt scotch whiskey, the Balvenie Double Wood, 12 years. I mean, it's, a, it's a very, very nice tipple. It was bought for me, um, for, by, like my wife bought it for me as a gift when I, when I, got, when I left my last job and went full time doing this. Um, but I only just opened it at Christmas, so there you go. Um, Spider Lord says this Captain's Reserve is a lovely drop. You can tell it was stored in cognac casts. I got a, a bottle off my sister for Christmas of, of Dura, which was aged in um, red wine barrels that I've not I've not tried yet. Um, Christian saying you have to refresh the link once a month. You can save the link to your desktop or a text document and just click it when you need it. Does it work like that, mate? I I, th I thought it was basically every time you click it, it refreshed it. Um, I, th I thought that was how it went, but I but I could be wrong. Um, Christian sharing the link there for the merch as well. Thank you very much. Stu saying, Andy, you're down to earth and a realist. There's no corporate bullshit, and you make people laugh. That's what I like. I've had enough of, of corporate stuff, mate. I, I had I had a corporate job, and I absolutely hated it. So I was never going to turn this into that same kind of thing. Um, like, I, I, if I recommend something, I want to recommend it because I genuinely. I genuinely like it. I don't want to recommend it because the sponsor has paid me X number of pounds to promote it, um, and if I don't say nice things, they won't pay me again next time kind of thing. That's why I've always kind of shied away from, from that. And I've, I've never been paid a penny by any gaming company. Obviously, companies send me things. Um, they send me kind of like free games and stuff like that, but that's that's part of um, me being able to refuse stuff is actually to have that stuff in front of me. I don't have a lot of kind of like disposable income these days to, to buy everything new that comes out. So if companies want me to take a look at it uh, unbiasedly, then then I, I don't see them sending me that as sponsorship. That's just me being able to, to carry out a review. However, I'll I'll be honest. There's there's stuff that people have sent me I've not reviewed. Um, there's stuff like because I I just couldn't get away with it. I didn't I didn't really like it so. 
I just it wasn't for me and, and, and I always struggle with that sometimes because I need to I need to understand the balance between what do I enjoy doing like what do I enjoy playing uh, or, or, what, or, or more what do I not enjoy playing personally and what's actually a bad game um, and if it's just something I personally don't like sometimes I'll not review it if I if I think it's poor if I think it's a bad game then I'll still review it and, and give it a, ne a negative review really but I, I always try and balance pros and cons when I review stuff even stuff I really like I try to say the things that you know may maybe others might not like or um, stuff that maybe aren't, aren't as good as they could be uh, excuse me <clears throat> um, James is saying he's had that as well it's very nice um, VG saying time to drop a little guy for daycare go to the grocery shopping um, see you later, mate. I, I think you said just uh, you were going to be listening, so no doubt we'll uh, we'll, we'll chat later, mate, as well. Um, Christian said, I'm fairly certain the cookies stay in your browser from affiliate links for a month. I click the link each time to be safe, but that's just me. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, mate. It's um, I did pretty well out of it when um, when people were kind of pre-ordering things like Amara from Goblin Gaming. Goblin Gaming do a lot, a lot. They hold all of the Mantic stock in. So if you're buying Mantic stuff, Goblin Gaming's a great place to get it from and they do 20% discount. Um, so if there's a big release coming, um, I tend to do okay. It'll get me a little bit of a boost, but generally just kind of week to week, it's, it's kind of like five, five or 10 pound here and there kind of thing. Like maybe, maybe you make a month. I might, I might make sort of like 10 or 20 pound one month from it. Um, and then if there's a big release, I might make a little bit more the next month kind of thing but it's a nice little top up it just it's just it just adds to the pot basically um adam's saying so time for everyone to open up several email accounts and get multiple audible and kindle trials yeah I, i'm not suggesting for any second any fraud stuff goes on or anything like that but yeah for, for for pure transparency if if you take out a free audible trial through my link you get a free book you can download any book you want you can cancel your account the minute you've got that book. You will keep that book forever. I make a commission. You don't pay a penny. And, that, and that's basically how it works. So if you ever thought about trying Audible, um, doing it through my link helps me. You get a free book. You get a free month trial if you like. I, I pay for Audible every month myself. I think it's £7.99. I, I pay for Audible personally every month. I love listening to audiobooks. I think it's worth it. But that's just me. Um... Tizzy Brain Drain says, well, even though I'm at home, I'm working, so no booze for me, but I raise my can of Mountain Dew to you. Cheers, mate, cheers. Scott says, uh, did the Deadpool need supporting, as the file says, supportless? I'll be honest, mate, I can't see any. There might be a couple of points just under the arms, Chris, you might have put some in, but, but I can't see any anywhere else. So potentially, like, if it's like that, there might have been some support kind of here, but I can't see anything anywhere else. Uh, Blizzard's the same. Does Goblin Gaming ship to the US? I don't think they do, mate. Actually, I think that's only one of the downsides from them. I might look in the future to trying to get like a like a US company or something like that for people that that aren't in um, in Europe or in the UK. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't, mate. Um, sad for Andy, good for my wallet. Yes, right. Should we? Should we? Should we get back to pain? Should we? Should we crack on with a bit more? I feel like I've got. I'm feeling. Like I'm still double parked with my two drinks here. Let me finish my prosecco first, and then we'll get back to painting anyway. Oh, oh! It is funny when you're flicking between the two. Right. It's a good job I got a wet palette. All that would have all dried out by now. Miniature painting. Good evening, mate. He says, "Did I miss the dance? You did, mate. You did miss the dance." Um, but I will. I will make sure that. Um, I'll make sure I do something special for all those that missed it. I'll be honest; it, it wasn't it wasn't anything wasn't anything to write home about. So, right, let's get some more some more paint on this bad boy. But yeah, if any, if anybody ever has any questions about about kind of what I do or like sort of. You know, like, where, where does the money go, that kind of stuff? If, you, if, you, if you're supporting me on Patreon and you think, well, you know, like, what, well, what, what are you spending that money on kind of thing? You know, f feel free to, to ask me. I'm, I'm completely honest about it. I'm not hiding anything from anybody or anything like that. Um, I'll be perfectly honest. I've not taken a wage. 
since I started doing this full time. All the money I've made has gone either on buying equipment for the channel. So I bought things like um, I bought a new camera, um, I bought cables and stuff. I what else have I bought? I bought the slider from my from my camera for doing those kind of like nice nice sliding shots and stuff like that. So I spent money on equipment. Um, I bought paints so that I've got a good range of paints for painting different bits and pieces. Um, obviously cables and batteries and chargers and all that kind of stuff. Um, but everything else has just gone, it's going back into reinvesting into, into trying to make it work really. So I, I've, not, I've not taken any money out yet. Like I said before, I basically saved up to enable me to make like that transition. Um, and I've been, I've been using that so um, but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm transparent about it I've, I've always said I'm, I'm not in this to to get rich or anything like that I, I'm in this to be able to do something I love I've still got to pay bills and stuff like that and I and I still have to make it work financially I mean that's obvious but yeah I mean I'm not I'm not trying to kind of I'm not trying to try and make like 20 grand a month or something like that like some YouTube channels I'm not trying to kind of uh, I'm not planning on like taking on staff and all that kind of stuff. I think it, it like if it ever grew to a point where it could support two wages, like me and my wife, like if she was doing like kind of like marketing and admin and sort of that kind of stuff, and I was doing the the video bits, that would be great. But yeah, it's not. Uh, I'm completely open about it. If anybody's got questions, I don't want anybody thinking I'm kind of hiding stuff. Um, Tracy Brinton says set up a web store with a US company would be awesome yeah I've considered I, I don't really know like uh, I'm not aware of the of the big kind of US companies and stuff like that but potentially setting up an, a, like an affiliate link with a US company when, when um, Goblin Gaming don't ship to the US I'm assuming wouldn't kind of cause any issues um, and then it just gives people in the US as well a way to to support if they if they don't shop with their local gaming store if you like so yeah I'll, I'll look into that at some point it's one of them things that because I do this on my own, there's a million things I'd like to do, but whenever I'm spending time doing that kind of stuff, um, it takes time away from from making content and writing scripts and painting miniatures and all that kind of stuff. So it's a bit of a balance. I end up like today, I've um, I've been filling a tax return because my tax returns <laughs> were due, uh, had to be submitted and paid for by the by the end of January. So I basically spent today. Um, setting up this live stream and um, and filling in my tax returns for for the year 2019 to 2020. So even though I um I didn't start my business until uh, until this year, it's still they still want me to fill in a tax return kind of thing. So I had to work out how to do that. I've never filled one in before. It always used to get done by my company. So it's amazing all the things that you that you find that you need to do. Um. But uh, yeah, you kind of, I kind of, I'm learning as I'm going. Um, uh, well, Peter, for those that missed it, scroll back 25 minutes. Adam says, reminds me of Teen Titans Go episode. Dance for your bees, dance for your bees. <laughs> my little boy loves Teen Titans. Um, Adam says his son's a massive fan. Lomin says, you're not in for the money fully, and that's what it makes it count. I'm honestly not, mate. It's like, it's like it sounds kind of, um, it probably even sounds a little bit kind of arsy, but like, I've, I've had a I've had a well paid job, and and money doesn't make you happy, mate. Honestly, like doing this, getting up every day and being able to do something that I love, and it's for me, and I don't I don't answer to, like I don't answer to shareholders, and I don't answer to a boss, and I'm not doing stuff because like if I question something when I was in my old job and somebody said, look, I don't, I don't really care what you think, you just need to do it. Like I'm not having to do that kind of stuff. It's a it's a completely different experience working for yourself, um, it, and it's it's stressful and it's kind of a, it's worrying when when the money's not as, as much as you need and all that kind of stuff. But it's hugely rewarding, and that's what that's why I wanted to do it. Um, I'm just checking there to make sure the uh, I'm painting the right bits. Yeah, and, and that, like like I said before, I, th I think. Timing wise, it, it happened the right way because I think if it had happened any later, with the whole pandemic stuff, I think I might have double, I might have double guessed it, and I might have thought, 
or maybe now is not the right time to be uh, to be leaving a full time job. Um, now do the booty scooty. I don't know what that is, mate. Lord Novus's Mantic blog mentioned Dreadball Combat spin off in the future. Hyped Dreadball Combat spin off. Mm, I don't know anything about it, mate. I don't know anything to be hyped about it, mate, if I'm perfectly honest. Rob um, or Martin normally give me a little bit of a heads up of things that's coming in the future just to see if it's something that I'd be sort of interested in taking a look at. They're really good at stuff like that, Mantic. Um, but. Um, I don't. I don't know a lot about it, mate. If I'm perfectly honest, I I used to kind of um, have a trip down to Mantic once, once a quarter probably, and sort of spend a bit of time with them and do some filming there and kind of have a bit of a, a meeting to see what what new stuffs coming up and that. But obviously with the the whole travel restrictions and lockdown stuff, I've not been doing that. But um, if they've got something new coming up, they tend to contact me and just something to, to have on the radar really um, and since I started doing this full time they've, they've been really good to kind of like uh, to make sure that they kind of give me a just give me a little bit of notice of things are coming because they, they know obviously I need to try and fit it into a schedule and stuff so they've been really good um, do I like every single game and every single miniature they make no but they know that they, they know the stuff that they, like, they, they would always say to me, look, if, you, if, you, if it's not for you, if you're not interested, like, don't, don't, don't be frightened to say, no, I'm not interested kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, the companies are generally pretty good. Some companies just won't even entertain you. They, they just don't even want to talk. I've tried contacting Private Ear Press. Didn't get back to me. I've tried contacting Night Models. Not interested. Um, War Cradle's been a bit up and down. They, they seem to send some stuff through and then they basically just kind of drop out of contact. That might be more to do with the fact that they expected me to do more with what they sent. Um, obviously lockdown stuff and all that's caused some issues. So yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a two-way street. But generally, um, companies are pretty, pretty good. Um, where this is it? Lord means I keep seeing it. Uh, what was that? Teen Titans Go song. <laughs> I, I do like Teen Titans, mind. Uh, Adam says his youngest watches it over and over. Yeah. M my little one was watching that thing that you'd recommended as well. Adam, it was it Bluey or something like that? The little dog? He was watching that as well. He enjoyed it. Stu Hayes says, Andy, what software are you using to stream? I use um, Streamlabs OBS, mate. So OBS is... Um, um, oh, what's it called? Something broadcast software. Um, and um, Streamlabs is like a kind of um, it's like a version of that which has a better kind of user interface and um, allows you to do like overlay stuff. So all these like all these bits of screens and and the up the, the updates that come through from when people pledge and stuff like that. Um, it just allows me to do all that kind of stuff and lets, lets me control it all. And then I've got um, a stream deck, an Elgato stream deck, which basically allows me to switch between the different... So when I'm doing, like, switching between these different scenes and stuff, um, I've got, like, a little... Let me just... Actually, well, I don't know if I'll be able to show you it. I don't know if the cable's long enough. I've got one of these little boxes, which I can... If I can get out of the screen. Which basically has all my different things on there that I can kind of switch between. And... Um, Let's, they're basically programmable, so I can I can get them to do lots of different things. Um, um, miniature painting says I set up my channel for myself because when I paint, I forgot forget the second after I put the paint back, which one I used. It's all fun and the subs are extra. Yeah, exactly. Mate. If if you're not doing it for the fun, mate, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Um, and I don't mean you personally. I mean I mean anybody. Like to be honest, like. If you want to do YouTube to become a big channel and to whoops, let me go back to painting and to kind of get loads of subscribers and make money, doing it about miniature stuff is not the way to do it. Like, just look at like people like Ryan's World with the kids' toy stuff. He makes thirty million dollars a year just from ad revenue. Not to mention all of the kind of sponsorship deals and um, toy lines and everything else that they rate, that they have. He makes thirty million dollars a year from advertising revenue. Um. So 
yeah, miniature gaming, miniature painting and stuff like that is not where the <laughs> where the fame and the big books are. So if you're doing that and, and you're doing it because it's your passion and that's what you enjoy, then then you have to do it for the fun. Like, if you have grand ideas of becoming wealthy from it, kind of in the wrong place, really. So yeah, it's. I mean, that's not to say that you that you you can't make a living out of it, as I as I'm trying to prove. Um, but you have to work hard. Like you, you have to either invest a lot of time and effort and, and money up front, and do things like, is it um, oh what they called again, table, is it on table top? No. There's a, there's a 40k channel. I haven't been going that long, and they do really really high quality bat reps and stuff. But they have about like, they have about three cameramen like running around the table. Um, it's really, really highly kind of um, what are called like produced. It's it's really kind of highly produced and edited and lots of overlay stuff and like fancy shots and stuff. You can tell they know exactly what they're doing. They didn't just start with like a webcam from a bedroom like most YouTube channels do. Um, so you either need to invest a lot of money and time up front and and treat it like a business um, to get to that stage. Because if you if you um, or you need to do what I did and just just keep plugging away. I mean, it's, t it's took me four years to get. It's took me four years to get to this point. Like it's not it's not a quick thing. You know what I mean? Like, like most people give up before they get to this point because it's just a case of like, oh, it takes too much time and I'm not I'm not getting anything back from it kind of thing. And I, and I, and going back to what I said before about like channels who cover the kind of content that I do, like don't really get don't really get to where I am if you like. Um, and it's not because they're not good it's because most of the time they just give up they just they just they've had enough because it's not making any money and it's not the subs are not going up fast enough or um or any of that kind of stuff and you have to treat it like a long like a, like the long game basically and it's just it's just how it is basically um i've been fortunate i i, I think mine's grown relatively quickly considering the the type of content i do like I said before, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody will, will like me personally or my personality. Not everybody will like the content that I do. Not everybody will like the fact that I don't cover um, the competitive sides of gaming. I'm not I'm not like a fantastic painter, so nobody's following me to get like painting tips, if you like. Um, so it's, it's purely, I've managed to grow this purely from finding other people like yourselves who kind of like the same stuff that I do, basically, and growing a community around it. And that's that's what brings me a lot of uh, pleasure. So, um, Bluey, yes, that was it, mate. Uh, good evening, Mark Berrycloth. How are you doing? John says a bit of resin sprue in your is your in your is a bit of resin in your sprue. Bad, uh, no, mate. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. It won't kill you. Uh, oh, let me scroll back a bit because we're chatting a bit there about the Mantic game. I think Dreadball Arena. Steve says. Um, John Essel says, I hate doing tax returns. I had to get an accountant to advise me on what's eligible and what's not. My mind rests a lot easier with someone to speak to. This is the first time I've done it, mate, but because I didn't have any business, like, accounts, I didn't, I, like, in the in the year 19 to 20, um, I, I hadn't made enough money, basically, for this to be classed as taxable. Um, all I really had to do this time was was work through my old accounts from, from my, my kind of my employment if you like it's next year's tax that's going to be it's going to have like sort of like three or four months of my old job plus a year of doing this as well so that's when it's going to get a bit more difficult and at that point i might have to pay an accountant um so yeah that's when it gets interesting um let me just get the bits on there in fact, I'm going to just wash my brush out. I need some more red paint. I need another drink. Um, Steve Evans is saying Dreadball Arena. John Estes says gladiatorial combat in the Dreadball Arena, isn't it? I honestly don't know anything about it, mate. I'll be perfectly honest. I've not uh, had any... Uh, I'm not. It's not even like I've signed an NDA or anything. I, I honestly don't know anything about it. Um, I'll tell you what, let's uh, pop up the main screen while I have a bit of a drink and stuff. Um... 
Good evening, Mark Berracloth. Uh, Adam says, did you watch the Croods movie? We haven't seen it yet, mate, but I was talking to my wife about it. We'll, we'll probably end up watching it with a little one now, now, he's, uh, now he's home seven days a week. Um, Peter says, I've noticed War Cradle get more covering on tabletop now that they are with Wayland. Maybe they have some agreements for exclusive content. It wouldn't surprise me, mate, if I'm perfectly honest. I mean, they, they basically have their own marketing team now, like on tabletop are now basically a marketing tool for... Um, for War Cradle. However, the, the, there's a website called, um, oh, what's it called again? It's called, in fact, I'll tell you what it's called, because I'll, I'll look it up now while I'm uh, while I'm thinking. It's basically a website where you can have a look and you can basically see how YouTube channels are doing over time, whether they're growing, whether they're declining, um, whether they're kind of, um, it, basically how they're doing. It's called Social Blade. The website's called Social Blade. And if you put the name of the YouTube channel in, it basically tells you like the data about the channel, how many views they get, uh, how many subscribers they get on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. And I'll be honest, on tabletop, they look like they, they're going in the wrong direction, if I'm honest. Um, considering that they are nearly 100,000 subscribers uh, and they've been going for a long, long time, they are 10 times the, the subscriber base that I've got. Um, they get roughly the same number of subscribers each month that I get and they get about twice as many views as I get um, but if you look at it from a graph perspective it's it's trending down and I think I think they were ripe to be, be to being bought like obviously some somebody's come in and, and picked it up um, but I, I do I do worry about the future of it especially if they're becoming more and more uh, I don't worry about the future. No, not if they've got a big company that's paying for it kind of thing. It's different when they were trying to make their own money. Um, Miniature Payton says, Playtesters are under NDA when testing. That's why you didn't hear anything about it. I, I tend to hear about it, mate. They, they, like, Mantic tend to tell me about it, even when things are being under NDA. I, I've signed NDAs with them, so they're fine to tell me. They tend to kind of give me the heads up a little bit about it. But um, maybe they've mentioned it and I forgot. I just, I just honestly don't remember it, mate. Um... Scott says, where did you get your paint rack from, Andy? Or did you make it? The paint rack, mate, they're from TT Combat, mate. I, I bought them. You can get them from Goblin Gaming. And Goblin Gaming, sort of like, you buy them through Goblin Gaming, but they're TT Combat racks. But I think I actually bought these ones from, from, I think I got one of them from Goblin Gaming, and I bought the other two just through the eBay store, through through TT Combat. I think they were like 12 quid each. I've got, I've got three of them. They hold 72 paints each one. So, um, in fact, let me just, I wonder if I can, if I go to here, if I, if I loosen this connector here so you can see, um, I wonder if I can zoom out a bit, you can see, oh, it is zoomed out, let me see if I can, if I move that light, you can see they go all the way up to there, whoops, so I've got all the um, kind of washes and bits and pieces at the top, so that, that basically, so the, the two, that bit, and that bit all the way top to bottom is one rack so like there's one there there's one there and then there's a third one there as well uh, and that's that's my racks that's that this is what I said before about uh, about I just I just prefer having one range of paints I don't know what and just pick them up when I when I run out and I've got one of every uh, base layer and one of every uh, layer paint basically one of every base and one of every layer one and that's what I've and one of every contrast as well so that's kind of what I've, it just means that I, I, I can continue to to do that. And then it also means as well when I'm doing um, any painting tutorials, um, the vast majority of folks tend to use um, Citadel paints. So it means when I'm doing tutorial stuff, it kind of lines up with, uh, with what most people have access to. So, yeah. There we go. Is that going to fall? It doesn't seem as tight as it did. Oh, that's because it's not. Let's uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it back on the main screen while I set it up so you don't all, you don't all get seasick while I'm trying to set my camera back up. Um, there we go. That's it. I think it wasn't quite clamped in the right place there. There we go. Um, that's better. Um, where are we at? Um, yeah, happy. I forgot Happy New Year, Mark. I've not seen you since, mate. So yeah, Happy New Year. Yeah, Bluey. Bluey's great. Um, 
Mark says, back on his laptop. Adam says, it's like Australian children's cartoon about a family of blue healer dogs. Yes, it's it, it very Australian, mate, and I, I like that kind of Australian humour. Um, Miniature Payton says, you, have to, you, you either have to be extremely good or extremely lucky if you want to get above 50k subs in our branch. I earned 90 US dollars and that's it. And then they made the absurd demands like 200 and f like 240k. Um, 240k. You you basically you've, you've got to have you've got to have a thousand subscribers, and I think is is it nine or five thousand hours of watch time in a twelve month period now to, to monetize the channel. I'd already passed all that stuff by this by the time this kind of came in. Um, um, Adam saying it's a family favorite. Yeah, it's good. Um. Or oh, 240,000 hours. Yeah, you, you do me, but honestly, on if your channel's going the if your channel is going the right way, you'll you'll make those numbers or find like pretty easily. And if you're not, you you're not losing any money basically. Like you you'd be losing pennies. Uh, that's the thing. Play on tabletop. That was the one, mate. Um, Adam says that red looks very matte. Is it just because the way it shows up? No, mate. It, it's pretty. It is pretty matte, mate. It's. Um, let me just go back here. It's 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 pretty flat, mate. I'm using corn red. I don't I don't find GW paints particularly glossy, um, and it's I, I'm it's obviously thinned down as well. I've thinned it down, so this is just the first coat going on, and it's probably um, the way it's go, going over that Zenithal Prime. Let me just bring that light down a bit. So yeah, it is it is just going on, matte, mate. I quite like how it's going on, to be honest. Yogam, thank you very much, mate. Um, well, let's, I can't read that one. I don't care about the numbers. I'm in it for the good content from a really nice bloke creating uh, a great community and the happy free dance thing. Congrats, Andy. Thank you, mate. That's much appreciated. Uh, thank you so much, mate. Um, let's see. Uh, where was I up to there on the chat? Um, James Bray says, I have to do mine because I get the child benefit. Got to the end and it asked me for a thousand pound back. Great. I filled mine in today, mate. Um, and it was asking about like um, company benefits. So I used to have a company car and stuff. So I put all the numbers in and it said that I, I owed them um, £6,000 when I filled my tax return at the end. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's completely wrong. That can't be right. And when I went back through it and, and look at like my P60 and my P11D and stuff from work, um, basically the, the way work calculated was my car benefit was already in my salary and, I, and I'd already paid the tax on the car benefit in my tax. So when I took that off, it was like, oh, actually, you, you owe £27. So, yeah, I, I sent it off and I paid my £27. And that's me done now for last year's tax. <laughs> um, but I, I did have a little bit of a panic. I must admit, I filled it in and I went, uh, Lou, will, will you just come and check this? I think I've made a mistake. <laughs> I thought I thought I suddenly had a big tax bill coming. Um um, Christian sharing the link there for the Amazon link as well. It is it's a UK only link now. I did have an Australian one. I did have an American one. Nobody used it. If you don't make enough money to get a payout in the first six months, Amazon basically closed the links down. So yeah, I lost both of those links because they basically just weren't getting used. Um, Tony Booth Lydon says, "Phew, squeezed in before the end." Hello, mate. Uh, Peter says, "I mentioned it before, but my job disappears end of March this year." I didn't realise that, mate. I could have got a similar job in another part of the factory, but I said sod it and applied for a job in the weekend shift. Sometimes it's nice to do something different, mate. Five days at home, two days of working for about the same pay. Yeah, that's. I'll tell you what, mate. Having time is is so so beneficial. Um, Steve says I've posted a link on the Facebook group for you to see what we're on about. Um, thanks, mate. Uh, Peter says I'll be honest. And I watch on tabletop for the let's plays and tutorials and the like, and that's their main content. I really believe lockdown hit them hard. To be honest, mate, I I find um, the fact. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of I'm, I'm talking talking publicly here. This is going to be on the internet for everybody to see. But I, I kind of find the fact that the, the way that their business is structured, they get paid for for basically showcasing other companies' games. And I think personally that, that it shows whether they like those games or not. That they still say positive things because it's not a review, it's a preview, it's a showcase, it's a they're basically being paid to talk about that game. But but I think it really I think it really shows. 
that they're not um, like they're not they're not necessarily passionate about every single game. And there's no way you would be. There's no way you'd be passionate about every single game. But unfortunately, when when you're when you're relying upon advertisers' money, you you have to show that kind of stuff. Personally, the only thing I watch from that channel is I, I, I watch their weekender stuff. I think that's when they're at their best, when they're just sitting about chatting and kind of that community spirit, which which that, that channel always had as Beast of War. Um, I think since they stopped doing 40k stuff, I think it's always been on a bit of a downward trend, um, unfortunately, because that was their bread and butter back in the day. Um, Marcus is saying, looking at my base for Ace of Base Challenge makes me wish I'd uh, had a leap in Conan rather than what I'm putting on it. Uh, Tony says, I think we're moving house. While moving house, I should take the opportunity to organise my paints. I have way too many and they're all over the gaff. I I just like to have them wherever they are. I, th I've, I think I've mentioned to you all before about... Let me just uh, go back. About how behind my paints, behind each paint, there's a, a label. So that tells me which, which paint should go there. Can you see that, that little tag there? <laughs> so each paint has a, a little label, so... I can make sure I put them all back in the same place, and I, so when I've got them all out, I know exactly which ones to put back. I know that they all go back, and then it's, they're all in the right kind of color ranges, so I know where to look for my greens, I know where to look for my reds, and kind of make my bits and choices and stuff. OCD, yeah. Um, Michael says two hundred and forty thousand hours. I don't think it's two hundred and forty thousand minutes. Mate. It might be two hundred and forty thousand minutes. I think it's only five thousand hours. Uh, needs a push or a plug. It, to be honest, mate, it, it, it doesn't. It, it's a case of like live streaming makes a massive difference. If you if you live stream, you, you, like your your watch time goes up immensely. But if you make like if you make a five minute video once a month, it'll take forever. And um, that's the problem with it. Um, I see you become better in painting and video quality. So there you go in the pocket for you. Um, yeah, but that, that, I mean, I've been doing this for years, mate. I, I've, I really enjoy that kind of stuff. And that's why, like, that part of that is my hobby as well. I enjoy trying to kind of make better quality videos. My, my paint, I wouldn't say my painting's got any better, if I'm honest. It was never, it was never great. It, it was never terrible. Like, I just, I, I'm kind of average standard, if you like. I'm, 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 I'm pretty neat and I'm good at the kind of base coat wash highlight type stuff. But I, I'm not in any of the fancy stuff, mate. Uh, Mark says, The wife brought me the Harry Potter uh, AMG for Christmas. Not full price, though. Got the core set for 15 quid. The game's all right, but it's like a prototype. Ah, oh, that's a shame, mate. Um, Adam says, I really... Excuse me, I really like it. I usually use Mephiston Red. Might have to switch to Corn Red. Yeah, I like Mephiston Red as a base normally, mate. But it, it's a little bit more kind of purpley burgundy, if you like. Oh, let me just zoom, zoom, zoom. Um, but yeah, it's going on nice, mate. So I'm using this as a bit of a darker red as a, as a base to start from. Um, uh, <laughs> James says, uh, I've got a problem with the tax term, deploy the wife. Yeah, she's pretty good. She, like, she's she's a salesperson. She deals with numbers all day. Um, Mark says, this is why I have my older sister help do my taxes. She's a professional accountant. Yeah, that'll help, mate. Um, Spider Lord says, Wayland own wall cradle. Yes, mate. Yes, they do. Um... Peter says, yes, the, the, the 40k stuff back when they were Beast of War um, with how was he called? Darren. Um, yeah, I know who you mean, mate. But they used to talk a lot back then. They used to do a lot of um, like competitive type stuff, like army lists and stuff. I think that's really where it kind of started. And over time, they obviously, like, in order to make money, that they changed the, the business model where they basically became about companies pay the money, and then because because they've got a big audience, doesn't matter how many views they're getting, they're basically trading off the back of having lots of subscribers. And they basically um Daryl, that was it, Peter's just saying, yeah, it was Daryl. Um they basically they 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 have a large number of subscribers, which means they can charge a certain amount of money to showcase games. And 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 for quite a long time, they were the only place to really kind of promote games. O other channels were like hobby channels, or they were there were a guy sitting in a shed, like just going, uh, uh, and this is what I, this is what I've painted this week on like a really poor camera. That's what channels were like. Things have changed a bit now. I mean, I'm not trying to blow smoke up my arse, but channels like mine have have, have have like upped quality content and stuff like that. Like with when it comes to um, like better quality cameras and lights and microphones and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
there are more channels now giving it a go. Um, you've got channels like um, like Squidmore now and like Midwinter Minis um, and Miniac and, and channels like that, which are now alternative places. I think when it comes to miniature games, there's still not a lot. There's still not a lot of channels really that to kind of showcase games and really review them and stuff. Um, because I don't think anybody really does review games. I mean, I try to, but they take a lot of work. Which is why everybody does just like an unboxing and just just and goes, oh, this is what you get. I think it's really good, kind of thing. Um, uh, yeah, I I mean I'm a big fan of Warren's. I I think I think Warren um, and Lloyd, to be fair, were were the absolute kind of like the energy of the passion of of, on, uh, of Beasts of War, um, and and I think it works best when they're on camera that's my personal they're the they're the presenters i kind of relate with and i think when they're on camera kind of being a bit larger than life and um, i think that's when they're at the best they were great when as was on there as well as there's another person who's really like a bit more kind of larger than life as well when he was on there um and then i think they've had other um sort of presenters that are, are a bit more reserved or a bit more relaxed and sometimes that can can kind of lower their energy levels a little bit um i think they're all nice enough people i've got, I've got nothing like nothing bad to say about any one of them but i just i think i think energy plays a, a, a large part in that kind of stuff um mox is whatever happened to sam from on tabletop i think sometimes they just um they just kind of they just they just leave they get jobs i mean wasn't there a period a while ago where there was a, like a young girl was on the channel as well they seem to bring a lot of new people on on screen when they were doing a lot more board game stuff but they all seem to have kind of disappeared as well um right let's let me finish that prosecco and we'll get back to a bit more pain i do still have the whiskey though to be fair so actually let me not bang that around let me put it over here and we'll get some more red in the palette that's what i stopped for wasn't it Adam says, is it weird that the name Tasty Brain Drain makes me feel hungry? <laughs> of course it's not weird, mate. If you're hungry, you're hungry. Right, let me move my mouse out of the way. Um, James is saying Squidmore's pretty good. Yeah, he's he's got um I mean he's a good painter. That's that's primarily where like where his um kind of stuff comes from, but he crafts a good video. I mean he's he he, he makes a very clickable video if you like. I mean I think it really took off. It might have been last year, potentially the year before, when he did the um, the video about paying, paying people on Fiverr to paint miniatures and stuff like that. It, it really seemed to take off at that point. But um, no, he's good. I mean, mid Midwinter Wint Minis, he's done a good job as well of, of growing his channel. Um, he seemed to do pretty well out of doing like a 40k how to play series, which really seemed to, to kind of like lift the channel a bit, but makes makes watchable content makes good content um i think there's there's a bunch of them people like uh, goober town there's a bunch of those channels all seem to have kind of come up at the same time and they've all helped each other um and they all seem to kind of get on together which is great um i think the problem the kind of problems that i have is that actually the the, the channel the channels that i would kind of like sort of um collaborate with are either way like out of my league from like a subscriber base, um, or um, or essentially we we just we don't do the same kind of stuff. Like I think the closest is probably the guys over at uh, Agents of Sigmar, and we, and we talked briefly about doing something together. But I think the problem is is they they tend to focus on um, on uh, Beast Grave or Underworld. That's kind of the type of stuff they do. Um, they obviously play a lot of stuff together as opposed to sort of more conversational like like uh, like uh, the kind of stuff that I do and I have to do conversational stuff because I'm kind of I'm on my own so it's not like I can play um but it's kind of hard there's, there's not a lot of channels um skirmish miniature gaming with uh, Luke over there as well he seems to be uh, doing okay coming up now as well um I've done little bits of stuff with um with the top table gaming guys as well in the past obviously jay's jay's not with them now um and, and jay was kind of like me and jay got on really well together he was kind of like my main sort of um sort of point of contact with those guys um i just there's not a lot of um 
like if like for example let's assume for one second that that um subscriber numbers didn't make any difference if i wanted to kind of do a collaboration with another channel um it's kind of trying to work out which ones would be of, of any kind of benefit really like to, to like how could i help them as much as them helping me like what can i do to, to help them i don't make terrain i don't i don't like do painting tutorials so much um i need to kind of i need to try that's the kind of stuff i need to work out like from a marketing point of view that's the kind of stuff i need to work out this year really how do i how do i how do i help myself by by kind of working with other with other people so we'll see we'll see how all that goes when when the time comes at the minute i'm just focusing on getting out as much content as i can and and i'm growing at the minute so long may it continue um um uh, Marx is gonna have to watch Deadpool after this. <laughs> yeah, uh, Adam seen the bust is epic. It's awesome, mate, isn't it? I, I, I love it. It's brilliant. Um, Tony says, did I miss something important? It says 10k next to the channel name. Yes, mate. It happened. It happened live on the stream tonight, mate. I forget who was in and who wasn't. That's hence why I was drinking a glass of prosecco and a glass of whiskey at the same time. Um, <laughs> yeah, you missed the dance. Lobin says, so I watched the Andy and Rem show yes yesterday. Okay, mate. Let's see what you thought of it. Where was? Let, let me know what you think of it, mate. I, I must admit, I I don't I don't really watch it. I don't I don't know the Rem guy. I know Andy. We've met a few times, like through kind of Kings of War type stuff. Uh, we met at uh, UK Games Expo. He's a nice guy, but um, I must admit, I've not I I've not watched the show in a long long time. Um, Marcus says I need it. I feel like I need to invent a drink called the Brain Drain, some kind of high proof alcohol that's super cold, so it kicks like a mule and causes brain freeze. You can always go with the uh, the whiskey and prosecco, mate. I'll I'll give you full credit for that one. <laughs> um, or should we call that one the blackjack? The blackjack cocktail, eh? Let's uh, just curve that bit in there. Um. I'm sure a gif will end up in the group. Yeah, no doubt, mate. It, it wasn't the best dance. And I'll be honest, I, I didn't think we were going to hit it tonight. So I didn't really kind of like, I wasn't practicing any moves. But I'll make a point of doing something, um, something a bit more official for you all. Um, I think all alcohol drains the brain, really. I've, I'm, uh, I've, my New Year's resolution. I'm going to drink more whiskey this year. It's a lot less fattening than beer. Uh, it has a few health benefits, believe it or not. As long as you're, not, as long as you're not drinking it for fun, um, and um, I think it's got zero, it's got zero carbs, and it has a lot less calories. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to drink more whiskey and less beer this year, mate. Um, let me just check this bust again. Okay, so then those bits need to be red as well. That's all right. I can do that. Um, let me just go back here a second. We're nearly at 10,010, folks. We're on our way to 20,000. Um, well, it doesn't make us smarter or better. Uh, think is that's for sure no you're not wrong with it it does give you courage sometimes though to do stuff you wouldn't do so uh i'm all for it um i'll be honest i, I kind of um I, I i do i do like a cigar and i do like a glass of whiskey and i tend to find and i was i was reading something about this the other day i tend to find it's really good like if i'm quite stressed about something like if i'm like whether it's all everything that's going on at the minute or the news or all that kind of stuff i tend to find actually taking time out to in, like to just sit and enjoy like like i don't think i enjoy a beer in the same way but if i sit with a glass of whiskey kind of i think because you kind of sip it i just kind of like i end up winding down and actually kind of relaxing a bit with it um like how i how i wouldn't do with like with a glass of wine or how i wouldn't do with a beer type thing I find it quite, um, quite therapeutic, really. 
I mean, it's not like I knock back half a bottle. I normally have like one glass or something like that, potentially two, but yeah, I just find it kind of relaxing. Um, so, right, what about that bit? Does that bit need to be red as well? No, that bit needs to be black. I think I'm okay with that. I need to tie that bit up. I need to do the little bits around the bottoms of the sleeves. Oops, we'll get the black on that bit when we go back to it. Right, um, um, Paul says, I have the Deadpool mini from Infinity from the Soldier's Fortune set. Oh, it's called, is it, it's Signor Massacre, isn't it? That's the one. Um, Lord Maiden says, I felt it was okay. They seem to speak about AOS and recent releases from Mantic as well, but it was more along the lines of what they thought of the models, but they ended up um, talking about getting people to do collaborations with them too. Ah, oh, right, okay. I, I, I see I haven't seen that for quite some time. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I, I know Andy plays a lot of... A lot of um, 40, uh, not 40k, sorry. He plays a lot of um, AOS and he plays a lot of um, Kings of War stuff. So I'm assuming that that, that they'll they'll kind of like tie up with other people who play the play the same kind of games if you like. So, right, let's get a bit of red into here. Well, I did expect to do a bit more on this tonight, <laughs> but I guess hitting the ten thousand subscribers today uh, kind of overtook that. But as I said at the start of the stream, I was I was painting this purely tonight for my own enjoyment. I'm not rushing it. I'm taking my time. I'm just enjoying the process. Um, I intend to try and kind of try and do a little bit more shading and highlighting than I would normally do with a miniature. Try and kind of push it a little bit more. But in order to do that, you need to get the base colors down to start with. So unfortunately, that takes a little while. Um, but we will get there. Um, Prosecco and Archers, there's a hangover combo. Tasty though. I don't think I've ever seen that made. Um, <laughs> Marcus says, now I want to see uh, Andy Buster move and do the worm dance. <laughs> back in my day, mate. Not not at 45, I'm not, mate. I'll put my back out. Adam says, Andy, we want an official dance video. Do you know what it is, mate? Um, I'll, I'll, I will see what I can come up with as a bit of a special thank you 10,000 subscriber video. See if we can do something a bit fun, a bit a bit different. Something, something I would normally never do. Um, let's see if we can find something funny. I mean, I'm not worried about embarrassing myself, let's be honest. I put myself out there on the internet every week, so I ain't really worried about embarrassing myself. Um, and to some people, 10,000 10, subscribers might not be a big deal, but to me, it's massive. Like I never thought I'd get here, so... If people think like, wait, what a knob! Like he's only got ten thousand. What's what's he getting all excited about? Bollocks to them! It's big news to me. I'm not doing this to kind of impress somebody else. I'm doing this to impress me. <laughs> so, um, I think sometimes as well is the the faster you kind of grow as a channel, the more you kind of take it for granted. Like I've. I've still grown relatively quick considering the type of content that I do. Um, so I'm not kind of knocking it, but like it's taken me four years. So I, I kind of appreciate it because it, like it's hard, it's hard work. Um, and you can't, you can't force people to subscribe. You can, you can try doing giveaways and competitions like some channels do, but invariably I, I've tried it in the past. Invariably what happens is people subscribe for the competition. And then when they don't win, they unsubscribe. So it doesn't do you any it doesn't do you any benefit really. You get like little short term bursts, but it doesn't help you. Um so I'd rather do the giveaway stuff for like like the challenge stuff and things like that rather than trying to grow subscribers. So Right. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. I've just realized he's got a, a card in his sleeve there. He's got an ace of spades. How very apt. <laughs> just tucked into his sleeve there. I never saw that when I saw it before. It was just while I was painting that bit. Um, um, 
Tony says, I hope to see Monday's live stream kick off with you flossing. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I will do so I'll do something for Monday. I'll do something for Monday's live stream. I don't know if it's a floss, mind. Mark says, whiskey is zero carbs and can use soda water with zero carbs too. That's why I'm drinking right now as I'm back on the keto after Crimble. Yeah, exactly, mate. It's good for you. Although, to be fair, I don't, I don't know if I would even put the soda in, mate. I would just, uh, I'd just have it neat and just sip it. That's why I'm doing it at night anyway. But, uh, yeah, whiskey and soda's all right. Yeah, if you have, like, a Jack Daniels and, and, and Coke... Kind of, it kind of ruins the zero carbs if you if you start having full fat coke in it. Um, let's get that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to kind of the older I get, the more I'm starting to appreciate different whiskies. I think I've mentioned this before about how I used to work for a wine company and stuff, and I I kind of trained to do wine tasting and stuff like that. So I kind of pick out different different flavors and different varieties and stuff. Um, and it was with that kind of sort of developing my, my palate, my taste palate. That kind of got me into things like, um, into rums and whiskies and cigars and like understanding the different, the different flavors and things really. Um, I found it really quite fun to kind of be able to identify certain uh, flavors and uh, grape varieties and soil types and whether something was harvested in daylight or at night yeah that is a thing you can even tell kind of the harvesting of grapes and stuff like that by the by the kind of sweetness and things all sorts of fancy stuff all right uh, where were we at um right let's where where was this one get the kids flossing i saw that bit uh, Christian said, I think the 10k dance should be Andy and Lou doing a do that. Not, not a chance, mate. Not a chance. Adam says, there was a training style at some stage called whiskey and squats. Was there really, mate? Lord Maiden says, the reason why I prefer Ashens, Giant Bomb, Barry Lewis, Blackjack, Red Rose, Walking and Desworth, the small intro, the small intro to no intro, the Andy and Rem intro. It's funny, mate. I used to have an intro years ago, uh, and then I started the, the intro that I use for my live streams. I used to use that on my videos, and then I basically scrapped my intros all together because actually I just I just didn't think they were adding anything to a normal video. The reason I the reason I put them on the live stream is purely just there, um, almost just to kind of like give people a heads up, like oh it's like it's live, like we're ready to go kind of thing. It's all like some some channels have like a five minute countdown and stuff like that. Um, I just like to have like. I have the title screen with the music on, which is just like a case, right? That gives me a chance, right? It's working, it's streaming, everything's working okay kind of thing. And then the little intro is just, right, we're kicking off now, we're ready to go. Uh, and that's the only reason why I use it, really. It just kind of prepares me as well. So I, it's like, right, I press that button, I've got like about five seconds, and then it's like, right, kind of game on kind of thing, like you're on camera. So that's the only reason I use it. But I, but I find putting them into, into my videos, it doesn't, it doesn't add anything. Like it's just padding out the start. I find when I watch other channels with with like relatively long intros, like I I am um, I skip forward. I skip over them. Like like if I'm watching Guerrilla Miniature Game stuff, I skip over his intro every single time. It's just so loud and quite kind of like um it's quite aggressive. It's quite an aggressive intro. Like yes, it kind of wakes you up if you like, but it's just for me it doesn't it doesn't add. It doesn't add to the to the thing. I think the one that uh, Uncle Adam's got on Tabletop Minions, I think, is probably perfect. It's it's a nice little kind of his is like a little bumper where it's like he, he tells you what the video is going to be about. There's that little kind of like intro burst, which is literally seconds, uh, and then straight into it. And, and I find that's for me personally, my, my taste. I find that's what works best. But everybody will have their own tastes. Um. Peter says, I took a look and apparently Sam from On Tabletop is a freelance journalist. And maybe he's gone out to do other stuff, mate. Tony says to Christian, honestly, I think Lou's going to let Andy lift off his head. <laughs> I haven't got the uber body strength, mate. I think that's what it is. <laughs> Lou might lift Andy. <laughs> She's a lot fitter than I am, mate, to be fair. Um, Mark's in the air. Thought he might have gone back to Japan. I remember he, he did spend some time over in Japan, didn't he? 
Right, just let me check my pictures here again as well to see what else needs to be read on the back. Right, so those those leather panels need to be read. Um, um, Adam says, I, I think 10K is a big deal. I have zero subs. I don't have a channel either, so 10K is... It's, it's massive to me, mate. Like, I'm sure there are people out there with, like, 20,000 or 50,000 or, like, like other channels, like, who kind of... They've blown up quite quickly or whatever. I'm sure to them, it's like, oh, like well, it's no big deal what you're going, getting all excited about kind of thing. But for me, it's just... I, I just honestly never thought a channel doing the content that I'm doing could ever get to there. So for me, it's just, it's more like the kind of like, uh, it's just a, a bit of a personal thing. Like it's just a nice little win for me. Like I said before, it doesn't change anything. I, I don't suddenly start making making money out of it. I don't, I don't suddenly start kind of, um, sort of get like, get recommended more or, or any of that kind of stuff. It doesn't really change anything for me, but except the fact that I guess if when I'm talking to companies, to say that I've got 10,000 subscriber base probably sounds a bit better than that. I've got seven and a half thousand kind of thing. Even though it's not a, even though it's not a massive difference, it's just psychologically, it's like, it's just a different, a different step up if you like. So, so I'm sure it might help me with like, sort of reaching out to companies and stuff in the future. But in the grand scheme of things, it's a, uh, it's just a nice little milestone for me. Um. Christian said, I'm sure Andy can work some video editing magic to make it work. I'll tell you what, that, now that, that might be something to uh, to aim at. I'll have to try and see now. I I, uh, I might I might do something a bit a bit silly, a bit uh, a bit self-indulgent just to kind of give you all a laugh. We'll see. Um But we'll uh, yeah, I, that might take some working on. Especially now we've got a um now we've got a four-year-old full-time at home while we're trying to work as well. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um. Lord Maiden says, updating the model. I put some more paint on it now and I've done a little wash and now it looks good. It makes up for the time it's weird. Brilliant, mate. Uh, Christian says the Ace of Space cards. Why I picked that particular bus for you? Thank you, mate. Honestly, I, I I don't know how I missed it before. I think it was just obviously the way it was all um, kind of one color before. Now I'm starting to put some colors on. I'm I'm noticing some of them little subtle details. Like I didn't notice before. Somehow, like the like the bullet holes across his arms and across his chest. I just thought it was something to do with the design type thing. But yeah, like they're like bullet holes through his stomach and stuff. Like even the little. Like the top of his mask type stuff as well, like those little things. Um, the way the stitching on the shoulder here is like stretched at the joint and stuff. All of these little details and stuff are just they're really, really well sculpted. And they've they've printed fantastic. You've obviously um cracked the settings, mate. I say that you you might have printed ten of them to get to this stage. Who knows? But um Yeah, I'm 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 hugely, hugely Thankful, mate, for you uh, for printing one and sending it. It was uh Don't tell my wife, but it might be my best Christmas gift. <laughs> um, awesome. All right, let's have a little look at my picture again, my reference picture. It looks like these little panels here on the back. Um... So a couple of panels there. I think there's those two bits. And then this big bit at the back, I think, needs to be done as well. Um, John says, we have 27 subs. I'll tell you what, mate. I, I saw a stat, just, just to kind of get slightly off track. But I saw a stat that said something like, if you have 100 followers on Twitter, you are in the top, something like the top 1% or the, or the top 5%. Of um, of Twitter sort of accounts, if you like, for followers, and that's purely because there are so many um, sort of Twitter accounts out there that basically just have less than a hundred followers. Like a hundred might not sound huge, but it, um, like it, it's pretty, it's pretty big. There's a hundred people want to kind of hear what you've got to say, type thing. That's like you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to kind of say something in a in a room. With a hundred people in to kind of 
to uh, to kind of for them all to criticise what you said, kind of thing. It's um, it's um, I think the vast majority of of, of uh, Twitter accounts have less than a hundred followers, which I, I found absolutely uh, sort of unbelievable, really. Um, let's just have a look. Um, where are we at here? Yeah. Paul said there's a special place in hell reserved for people who mix single malt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you, mate. I feel you. I wasn't going to say that out loud, though. Krabby, good evening, mate. Tony says, just poured myself a 12 year old Speyside malt. In celebration, cheers, here's to the next 10,000. Cheers, mate. Chin, chin. Um, and Christian says, Crabby, you missed the 10K dance. Uh, Marcus says, giveaways are tricky. The stupendous Wave channel lied about giving away FX lightsabers every month, and he lost, lost a bunch of subs. People were pissed. I think it's just a case of, like, um, like there's nothing wrong with giveaways, as long as you kind of, as long as you follow up on it kind of thing. Um it's just the fact that actually they have they have a negative effect on on a channel in the long run because you either like I said before people either subscribe to enter the competition and then unsubscribe when they um when they don't win or or worse they subscribe to the channel to win and then when they don't win they basically they don't unsubscribe and then they just never ever they never ever watch the channel. So if you've if you've gained a hundred subscribers from a competition, for example, or if you're a big channel, you might you might have gained thousands, um, and then those thousands of people never ever watch one of your videos again, um, then it doesn't it doesn't do you any favors. So it, it is a double edged sword, which is why I, t I tend to not really do them on YouTube. Um, I'd I'd rather give away to the Patreons or to do something like for for a challenge or something like that. Um, which reminds me, actually, I, I mean, I, I talked about that. I did promise about doing the, um, the Hero Quest giveaway as well. I need to get back and paint that stuff. To be fair, um, I did promise it, and I've and I've been lax on it because it's out of sight and out of mind. You all know about how I don't like to leave unpainted minis lying around. They're back in a box somewhere out the way when I tidy it up, and I, and I keep forgetting to do them, um, and it's kind of it skipped my mind a bit. So I, I will get back and get that done for people. And then we'll do that 10k either that, that 100 patreon giveaway like i said anybody that was that was a patreon when i was at 100 100 patreons the first time i've got a list of those people um and then basically anybody that is a current patreon when i do the draw will we'll enter in to win that that painted uh, copy of hero quest um but yeah I, I apologize that's dragging on a bit long now to be fair and like i said before it, it, it i doing this on my own I just need to prioritize stuff and I forget that sometimes. Um, I get behind on some things and it's not that I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs not doing anything. I just, at the minute it's all still new to me and I'm still I'm still finding what are the things I need to prioritize. Um, so yeah, please please bear with me folks. I'm, I'm not doing it on purpose to be an arsehole. <laughs> um, um, Mark saying the famous grouse that it sort of takes the blended sharpness off. Single malt and neat only. Paul says, uh, "Good recover," but the whiskey guys have got their eye on you. Crabby said, "No way, yeah." Mike G, oh, I hate GMG's intro. I think I avoid his videos because of it. I don't avoid his videos because of the intro, but I do always skip forward. So I'll I'll press that kind of that thirty second skip thing a couple of times to skip forward. Um, I'd honestly prefer I I'd, I'd prefer he either changed the music, or he uh, or he shortened it, or or even just turned it down a little bit or something like that. But that's just if he likes it, he likes it. It's his channel. I'm sure these kind of like his main subscribers must all like it as well. I just um, I just find it's the funniest little things can turn people off. Like it, like that that music is quite. It's quite a. I said before, it's kind of like, a, like a, quite an aggressive tune. If you like, it's not relaxing. It's not. It's not a welcoming tune. And I, I just personally, for me, I think it's too. Uh, I think it's too much. But that's just. That's just me bitching. He's doing a lot better than I am. So, who am I to kind of comment? Um. 
it, that's coming together quite nicely. I don't think that those bits down the side are red, are they? Is there any red bits down the side? I think maybe those bits are red. That little bit of piping at the side there. I think maybe those bits are. So we'll do them as well. Um, Adam says, apparently you're supposed to put two or three drops of water in the whiskey to release the flavor and let it breathe for a few minutes before drinking as well. Um, to be honest, it, it depends upon the whiskey. So the reason you put two or three drops of water in is if you have a particular whiskey which has high like oil content, like it's um, to do with basically like kind of what the whiskey was made of, what will happen is it, it, it works like a bit of a chemical reaction and it basically kind of wakes the whiskey up and it... it you know how if you put like oil, like water into oil, the oil obviously floats to the top. The same thing happens with with certain whiskies. Is that basically if you put those few drops of water in, it basically like like I said before, it, it creates a bit of a chemical reaction. Certain bits will drop to the bottom with the water. Certain bits will float to the top, like like an oil, um, and it and it releases. It, it, it gives a completely different flavor profile to it, um, to the whiskey. Other, other whiskies, you'll not get any difference at all from it. Um, and if you put too much ice in and let it melt, or if you um, if you put too much water in, it'll actually kill the flavour profile because you're essentially just diluting the whiskey. Um, so the best way like, like, is, try by all means, try it, literally two or three drops. Try it and see if it makes any difference because, like I say, some whiskies, it makes a big difference. Some whiskies, it makes absolutely no difference at all. Um, I think it tends to work, but... It's I forget what it is in the whiskies that makes it work, but it's like if they've got a bit of like an oil content to them, and it's not oil, but there's there's something that reacts like an oil in the whiskey. But um, yes, that's that's exactly what you uh, what you can do with certain whiskies. I prefer just to have my neat if I'm perfectly honest. I sometimes put an ice cube in it. I've got um, some of those whiskey rocks, you know, the ones that are like stones, so they don't water it down, but they do cool it. The problem is, if you um, when you cool any alcoholic drink, all you're doing is just taking away some of the flavour profile. You're essentially that's why some beers, when they when they serve like super chilled, they're just essentially killing a load of flavours, and they're, and they're just they're hiding a bad beer sometimes. Right, that's uh, I think that's the bulk of the reds done. Have a quick look on here and see if there's anything I think I've missed. We'll come back to the card, I think, at the end. But I think that's the bulk of the red. Like I say, I'm just going to get the base colours on first. Um, and then I'll uh, then I'll come back and and do my highlighting and blends and all that kind of stuff. And see where we go from there. Right, how are we doing for time? 20 to 11. Uh, let me just wash that brush a little bit. This cheap brush hasn't been too bad, actually it started to soften up a little bit now. It was a bit, um, it was a bit like, I can't even remember, like, almost like there was too much strength in the belly of the brush. But I think the more I've used it, the more it's kind of softened up. I did wash it before I started as well to try and um, try and soften up the bristles a little bit. But um, let me give it a bit of a, a soap wash. Um, let's have a look here. Lord Maiden saying, yep, that makes sense. And it's the same for me. The live stream's like, here we go, like the giant bomb one. I, um, I've not... Um, I've not seen any giant bomb stuff. I keep hearing about it on, on podcasts that I listen to. I listen to Cranky Gamers UK, which is like a video game podcast. Um, uh, just more out of their habit, really. I've always listened to it. Um, but um, they, they mentioned giant bomb quite a bit. But I must admit, I've never watched any of giant bomb stuff. So I, um, I don't know a lot about their content, if I'm perfectly honest. All right, let me just... Uh, clean the clean the soap out so after you've kind of washed your brush a little bit and you get a bit of stuff in the bottom just to get a tissue and clean the soap out um, 
Mike G says, unless it's a video I'm really interested in, then I'll mute it. But it does keep me from just get letting the video play for background noise. Yeah, I, I think sometimes as well, it's it's the, the difference in volume as well is something to watch for on that one. Um, Peter says, finish the Stormcast assembly and also done Lycron from Nighthorn. So that's a nice work for him. Nice one, fella. Lord Maiden saying uh, that I like not an overly long thing, that like a soap intro. I don't need to hear a full theme tune like Neighbours every time. Yeah, uh, Adam says, edit both dances together into the same vid, Andy. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Um, David says, I wish I'd printed mine bigger. Next time, mate, yeah, next time. Um, Stu saying, I love it when you find details while it's painting a mini. Goblins are great for that, so they make me grin every time. <laughs> Lord Maiden saying, we won't tell her. It's not, not like she watches. She does, mate, to be fair. That's the problem. Sometimes she does watch. Um, oh, I'll tell you what, let me... Let me get back to the main string. I'll click, click on with my with my whiskey here because this has taken quite some time to, to drink. Um, where? Um, Marcus is saying Andy's music video should be a men with without hat safety dance. I I will have to um I'll have to try and understand how I can put a video up with music that won't get me um kind of like get me a copyright strike. I don't know if I can. I think that's the problem. It may have to be a Facebook thing. Um, Krabby says that was horrific. I kind of got, I got caught off, off guard, mate. I, I had a feeling it wasn't going to happen tonight, and it kind of caught me off guard. Jim says two hundred ninety-three Twitter followers, big time. There you go, mate. Honestly, I think that's that's quite an achievement. Uh, Spider Lord says I just crossed a hundred subs on Spider Education Channel. A small milestone, but it's a start. Everybody start getting your first thousand subscribers, mate. Is the hardest thing you'll ever do because it, it's really hard to promote your channel, like when. When nobody's watching it, how, how do you kind of get the word out there? It's really hard. Christian says he's at 111 followers on Twitter, and I honestly have no idea why most of my stuff is retweeting. I tell you what, mate, it's, um, I don't understand Twitter. I don't know what to do with it, really. I, I, I'm i not the kind of person that's going to post pictures of, like, um, my lunch. Um, so I never really know what to, I never really know what to post on there. Uh, Marcus has seen the only Twitter I follow is the annoying mockingbird that lives in the pine tree outside my room. I really want that bird to die sometimes. <laughs> 4 a.m. is no time to be woken up by a freak bird. Barry Kleiber, how are you, mate? How are you doing? He said, Did I miss the happy dance? You did, mate. You did. Uh, Lord Maiden said, I thought you were waiting for the release of the new one to give away the old one. No, nah, mate. I'm there. Uh, I'll be honest. I mean, it, it, it means a lot to me. Which is why I was giving it away because it, it, it was to give back to Patreons, really, to give something that was important to me because you'd done something that was important, like for me as well, kind of thing. Um, that was why I wanted to give it away. But in, in all honesty, I've had it for like thirty years or whatever, and I hardly play it. I'd, like it'll never get played. I'd, I'd rather it was kind of given to somebody who would get use out of it. So that that was why I decided to do it. But I've got no intention of buying the new one, mate. Um, Christian saying, take your time. <laughs> I think I already have taken my time, mate. I know pe people are willing to wait and, and they've been massively patient, but I just need to, I need to get my priorities right and understand what's what what's next on the list. Um, Scott says, night all, great stream, got work in the morning. Take care, mate. Enjoy work. Um, or enjoy your, your, was it your hour at work or something that you're in for? Mark says, good night, Scott. Uh, Mike G says, best thing about he request is putting it away and forgetting all about it. Exactly, mate. Uh, Marcus says it really sucks since I can't hurt it since it's a state bird making it illegal to harm. Sounds like swans over here, mate. We, we I think you can go to jail for, for killing this one. Um, Barry saying I have to watch it later. Paul says high alcohol all content whiskies generally need a few drops of water too. Yeah, Isla malts are my favourite. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Isla malts, but I am. Um, I'm I'm kind of getting into whiskey more now. I do, like I said before, I love I love cigars. I love trying different types of cigars. I, Cubans are, are, are particularly favourite of mine, and certain types of Cubans. Um, but um, whiskies, in the past, I was always hesitant to spend like forty pound on a bottle of whiskey or something to not like it, if you like. So it's only now, as I'm starting to kind of get a bit older, and my my taste buds are changing and stuff, that I'm starting to kind of test and experiment with different whiskies. I don't have a lot of spare cash, so I need to buy one that I know I know I'm going to like. But I'm starting to get them for like gifts and things for Christmas and stuff now. Um, um, Adam says my sister-in-law was in a whiskey club and told me about it. It wasn't really listening. I just wanted to drink the whiskey. Um, P 
Peter says, I do prefer neat whiskey, but I'm not supposed to drink alcohol at all. I have to add a mixer like ginger ale or soda. I do like a bit of ginger ale, if I'm honest, mate. If it's if, if it's a if it's a whiskey that that sh- should have a mixer, I do like putting a bit of ginger in it. Like, um, you see, I only ever drink this whiskey neat unless she's around. Yeah, I tend to just drink it neat, mate. Um, just regular water. I have a miniature blown glass, va- Valinch. I went to a um. A whiskey bar in Scotland many many years ago. I used to work for a brewery, uh, and our head our head office was in was in Waverley, just outside of Edinburgh. And we sometimes used to go there for like a team meeting and go in and stay in Edinburgh. And there was a whiskey bar over the road from the hotel we used to stay in. And the tables had a a, a, like a, a tap like a water tap in the middle, so you could drop a few kind of drops of uh, of water into your whiskey there as well. It's something I've not seen anywhere else. Only ever in that bar. Um, ASDF says I read somewhere that Mountain Dew was originally made to be a whiskey mixer I can imagine that mate James says did Lou try the last podcast on the left she's definitely downloaded them mate I'm not sure if she's listened to them yet but um, after you sent me the link I knew which numbers were the ones for the for the Ripper stuff so she downloaded them that night straight after the, uh, the stream mate but I've got no idea whether she's listened to them or not uh, Tim Kelly says blimey his cranky toes still going he winds me right up I listened for a few years but enough was enough I um I kind of have a bit of a love hate relationship as well. He's a, he um, he's he's very opinionated. He he interrupts his co-host all the time and talks over them. Um, but I, I I think I've just listened for so long. I, I it's almost like um, it's like Stockholm syndrome. I think, mate. I'm just so used to listening to it now. But yes, he is still going. Um, James is saying Twitter's for calling an insurrection coup. Apparently. I think it. I think it kind of is me. I I honestly have no idea really how I'm supposed to use it. Like like I know what Facebook is, um, and I know what Instagram is, but but Twitter just absolutely passes me by. When you see these people with like twenty thousand Twitter followers and stuff like that, and I think you, you're just you're telling me what you had for your tea, or you or you're telling me like um, or or sometimes I find people that are oversharing kind of personal information. To, to huge amounts of people, um, and I and I just I just don't I don't understand that I don't I don't get Twitter at all. I feel like I, I feel like I must be some kind of boomer. I've completely missed the boat on Twitter. I end up using it just to kind of to chat to a few people, to um, to see what people are up to, almost like a halfway house between Facebook and Instagram. Um, and I obviously share like my videos and things like that. But I honestly don't I don't really understand it if I'm honest. Um, Paul says we talk about lunch here all the time, so why not on Twitter? I think it's different when we're just sitting about having a conversation like this. We talk about food, but I find it weird people just like I'm having, like like I'm having a Sunday lunch. There's my picture, and it's like, all right, okay, like I'm I'm just I'm not I don't I don't understand it. Maybe it's just me. I don't understand it. Um, <laughs> education for spiders yes um you can go to jail for harming a mockingbird in tech mockingbird in texas as well there you go i didn't know that uh christian says all the swans are actually owned by the queen a royal decree harming one is technically treason yeah that i knew there was something like i, mean, I couldn't remember exactly but yeah that's, i knew you, you can definitely go to jail for for harming a, uh, a swan paul says no high alcohol content cask strengths so things that are 40 percent or over if you're only just getting into whiskey stay away from isla that's whiskey on hard mode yeah I, I i it's not so much i'm just getting into it i'm broadening my horizons i've i've liked whiskey for a long time and i and I, there are certain whiskies i like i've tried isla it's um it's not my that, that kind of peaty really kind of heavy taste it's just not not something i really enjoy but um yeah it's um i, t- I tend to kind of stay away from that stuff I do like bourbons as well. I do like a, a bourbon or a bourbon, not a bourbon, bourbon's a biscuit, a bourbon, um, and I quite like um, like a like a rye like a uh, like a rye whiskey as well. Um, um, uh, Laguelan uh, or Lag 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 Ro- I can't even pronounce it. Try that one. It's a personal favourite. There you go. Uh, not as peaty as most Isla malts. I'll have, to, I'll have to give it a try. If I go to a pub, <laughs> what I used to do was when I was working away with work, it was an opportunity to kind of sit in the hotel bar, do a little bit of work on a night time and kind of like have a shot of like different uh, different types and stuff like that. That was a way to do it. These days, it's um, <laughs> obviously get, getting to a pub is non-existent now. So... Um, 
Lemuel Crazy says some people also buy followers and subs. They do, mate. Yeah, you see quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of that, especially on Instagram. It seems to be a big thing buy buying followers. Um, Peter says, so you think it's wrong to showcase my undies every day on Twitter? I don't think it's wrong, mate, as long as you're changing them every day. If you're wearing the same pair more than one day, I wouldn't be showing multiple pictures, mate. <laughs> uh, uh, congrats on 10 cases. Let me thank you very much, my friend. Uh, Tim saying, Insta is my go-to platform since deleting Facebook. Doesn't seem to be any drama or politics. I, I don't uh, understand... Um, like like my my younger lads like use use Instagram to like to chat to their friends and stuff as well, and I and I I never really understood that. I just I don't even read the comments on 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 pictures generally. I just kind of scroll through and just look at the pictures. I don't really follow lots of people. Um, so I I know a lot of people kind of like you'll see these people with like ten ten thousand followers, and then you look but but they're following like thirty thousand people kind of thing. I don't I don't really kind of that kind of like I follow you you follow me type thing to, to, to grow a big number Um I kind of just I kind of just post bits and pieces I post pictures of like what I'm working on I might do the odd bits and pieces I sometimes share like a video thumbnail if I think it's a good thumbnail or something like that but again I, I'm i just I, I'm obviously getting old oh, oh. <coughs> something stuck in my throat there oh um um Peter says, bringing the happy dance to everyone. Yes. Robert says, well, well assembled. Ten cultists, four cycles and a quad and saw a happy dance. Quite a deal. There you go, mate. Um, Adam says, Glen Moranji is the shiz. My uh, my granddad used to drink a lot of Glen Moranji and Jameson's he used to love as well. Um, Peter says, apparently the way to pronounce <laughs> bourbon biscuits is the same as the drink. Who knew? Is it bourbon? I, I, think, it's a bur I think it's a bourbon. Unless I'm being saying bourbon biscuits, it should have been. Uh... Marcus says, Christian, try living in the States. Each state has a different state bird. And that in that state, it's illegal. Is that really the case? I didn't realize it was like that. Is it, is it Laguelan? Uh, um, Peter says, is turn them inside out considered a change? <laughs> turn them inside out and then turn them back to front, get you three days out of them. Is that, is that, the, is that, the, or is that get you four days out of them? <laughs> um, Spider Lord said he found Tasca to be Petey as well. Uh, Spider Lots is maybe the taste boards are destroyed. Crabby says Instagram is a strange place, but for me it's the most digestible of a bad bunch. I love Instagram purely just to kind of see nice paint jobs and stuff. Um, I follow a load of whiskey stuff on there, a load of cigar stuff on there. I follow some kind of like um, like uh, like men's clothing type stuff, like sportswear and like um, I can't even really describe the type of clothing stuff. Like I, I like I, I like nice clothes kind of thing. I'll follow some of that stuff. So it's almost just like a, it's a little bit like, what was it called? Like Pinterest type stuff, I suppose. I just kind of scroll through it and just, I'll heart the odd picture that I like the look of kind of thing. But for me, it's, it's almost like looking at the news and just kind of scrolling through and having a look. So I quite like it. I find it di digestible, but I very rarely read any of the, the chat or the comments or anything like that. I literally just look at the pictures. Um... Uh, Spider Lord said he's got several lovely 18 year olds in the cupboard. Um, some whiskey too. <laughs> I like that one, mate. Paul says, Talica is smoky but not peaty. Uh, it's not an Isla Malta. Peatier whiskeys and look well. Um, <laughs> Tony's, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced bourbon. Bourbon? Bourbon? I think it's bourbon whiskey and bourbon biscuits is what I would say. Crabby is also a good start on my repulsor armor tonight. Off to bed, work tomorrow. Take care, mate. I'll catch you later. Lag, Lagavul, Lag, Lagavulin. There you go. Thank you, Paul. Um, Marcus is saying, "Okay, it's weird. I cannot see everyone's text." Uh, Spyro said, "Are you? If you look at the top, mate, is it on live chat or top or top chat? If it's on, if it's on top chat, you're missing some of the chats." Um, Peter says, "OMG, you get four days out then. <laughs> no wonder they want you showcasing speedos." <laughs> Uh, Spellers of Glimmer is my easy drinking whiskey. Um, I would say my easy drinking whiskey is probably Monkey Shoulder. That's my kind of like if I just want a, like a little tipple, just like um, like price versus quality type thing. Um, that's that is kind of what I would normally do. I think. Um, James is saying I love bourbon and bourbon, uh, bourbon and bourbons not mixed together. Dipping bickies in booze. Oh, there's worse things to do with your life, isn't there? <laughs> 
Anyway, folks, we're hitting about 11 o'clock now. So I'll probably start around that up now. I've got a little bit of whiskey left. I'll finish my whiskey and then we'll start around it up. But um, yeah, like, thanks again for, for, for the, for the 10,000 subscribers. All you folks that are in tonight, I'm assuming you're all subscribers. Um, if it wasn't for you subscribing, I'd, <laughs> I'd be 40, 45 short. Um, where's it now? Let's let's have a little look and see how it's how it's doing. See where we're at. We are at ten thousand and seven subscribers. So yes, at least if I lose a couple, I'm still I'm still over the I'm still over the mark. Thank you. Um, Tony said, oh, um, I find dark chocolate and whiskey go together nicely. I tend not to eat when I'm drinking whiskey." I'd have a cigar, so I'd have a, a cigar with a whiskey or a cigar with a with a coffee, uh, or potentially with like a nice red wine. But um, I tend not to eat with whiskey. Um, <laughs> Mark saying, "How do I subscribe?" Um, Peter Cummins, I was going to say, oh, you must have copied that from somewhere. That, that, that Lig Wasta is the best whiskey, and he says, "Yes, I made that up to to mess with you." I'm surprised it wasn't a, a Rick Roll one. That one, mate. Scott saying, night all, great to be here for the magic number. Thank you, mate. Christian says, we're making whiskey-infused donuts in 2019 somewhere in London. When I used to work for Scottish Newcastle Brewery, we had a partnership to make um, Newcastle Brown Ale ice cream. It was amazing. Um, <laughs> Tasty brain drinks, I guess I'll be going to London then. Bliss says, great stream as always, Andy. Congrats on the big 10k. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, and... You also need to switch back to live next live stream. Yeah, it's every time because I do a thing where I like pop out the chat, so I make the chat really big on my screen, and I always have to remember to go back to live chat, otherwise I miss loads of comments. Um, Tony said I maybe have a whiskey once or twice a year, as I don't drink at all as a rule. Um, I think I said at the start of the stream I was going to do kind of like dry January and stuff, but. The whole lockdown thing doesn't make me want to kind of go cold turkey and um, and eat healthy and try and kind of exercise all at the same time. So yeah, I've decided to not to not um, knock the kind of beers on the head, the heavier stuff, the more fatty stuff. And I'm just gonna, I'm going to enjoy my whiskeys. I've got, I've got loads of whiskey now where people have bought me stuff for gifts, um, and I, n I never really seem to drink it at home. It always feels like a bit. It was weird. I, I think it feels like it's a special occasion to kind of sit and have like a. Like a, a glass of spirit or something like that, where I would have a beer, like just sitting watching the TV. I, I would never really drink like sort of whiskey or vodka or something like that, sitting sitting at home. Um, but yeah, my New Year's resolution is uh, to have a bit more of the a bit more of the good stuff. Life's, life's too short to not drink the good stuff. That's for sure. Um, um, Peter, says, oh, sorry, Jim says he's made some progress on his skinks and their home slowly getting there. Nice one, mate. I love what you've done with that base, mate. It, it, it's really, really coming together. It's funny when you see, when you see it first constructed, you can see what you've done to make it, and then as soon as you get that prime on it, and it hides all the different kind of, like not the joints, but like the the different. It ha almost hides the layers. It hides the different materials, and it makes it one thing. It's just like wow. It's really come together. I can't wait to see that finished, mate. Um, Peter says, now seriously, I know next to nothing about whiskey, vodka, man, myself, when I was still a drinker. Um, I'm not I'm not a huge vodka drinker. I've got a few nice vodkas at home that people have bought me, like as gifts and stuff. I've got a bottle of Crystal Skull vodka and I've got a, a bottle of Grey Goose and stuff. And like, they've never even been opened. Because like I said, I feel I always feel like vodka is basically, the idea is, is, is vodka is to make something else alcoholic. <laughs> Where whiskey you, you drink it because you like the taste of it. Um, 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 Peter says, I actually drink, cheat twice a year though. I have a drink to celebrate Andy's 10k. <laughs> Don't tell my doctor. <laughs> nice one, mate. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, Paul says, I don't like drinking whiskey alone. It doesn't need a special occasion, but it does feel like it needs to be shared. Yeah, I, I get that, mate. And I, I think at the minute, I'm starting to realise that I'm the same with, with having a cigar, to be fair. I love nothing better than to sit outside when the weather's a bit, little bit warmer, put my fire pit on in the garden, sit and have a, a glass of whiskey like with a friend, sit and have a couple of nice cigars, sit and put the world to rights and just kind of like switch off and relax. And I'm realising more and more that ain't going to happen for a long time. So I'm starting to re-examine uh, re, uh, 
uh, at what point do I uh, do I enjoy the stuff I enjoy? Um, Marcus says, sometimes I think I should make a channel that is about answering questions about America for foreigners. There are plenty of channels about visiting the US, but no one answers their questions. There are, you know what it is, mate? That's not a bad idea. I'm sure that the same would go for like Americans asking questions about the UK as well. I'm sure like when we start getting into all these different little quirks and what was it I said the other night on, on, on my Todd? And, like, and I think it was VG saying, on my Todd? What, what, what's that about? Um, Lobin says, I'm a cider diver, soul survivor. I'm the one who's clean. <laughs> uh, Peter says, well, flavoured vodkas are actually nice and less strong. Um, absolute vanilla. A measure of whiskey is just one of life's simple pleasures. That, yeah, yeah, definitely. James says, my boozy days of my mid-twenties, a bar near me would pour me a triple grey goose over ice when I walked in. It was like the TV show Cheers, but with drum and bass and white shirts. <laughs> yeah, I think my local pub probably used to get me... Um, a bottle of castaway and a bottle of diamond white for yeah, and, and put it in a pint glass for a, a blast away i think that was probably my go-to when i was i'm a bit younger than you mate obviously but yeah that was probably my go-to back in the day pushkin blackberry vodka i've never heard of that mate anyway let's wrap it up now thank you again everybody it was awesome to share that kind of break over into ten thousand subs tonight with you um i'd i'd much rather do it like this on a live stream than just kind of wake up one morning and go Oh, I hit 10,000 last night. It was awesome to do it together with you lot. So you, there was about 45, 50 of you in here tonight. Um, you'll always know that you were there when it happened. So thank you very much for sharing that with me tonight. Christian sharing the link for the Patreon there as well. If you're not a Patreon and you want to kind of uh, help support me, the channel, $2 a month, it's less than a, less than a price of a whiskey every month, uh, gets you into the Patreon chat, in, in the Discord as well, and you get to hang out with this lot seven days a week so thank you very much everybody um it's it's been an absolute pleasure tonight and i will see you all on monday night live and i'll have to give a little bit of thought about uh, what i do about this 10k celebration video but take care folks and i'll speak to you soon thanks for watching my video i hope that you really enjoyed it and if you did why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that i've done if you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon, where you can pledge in support from as little as $2 a month, and there is lots of different tiers and bonuses, which will give you access to a private Discord server, it will give you free t-shirts, free mugs, a podcast every month, and a number of other things, including getting your name at the end of every video, like these awesome folks who already support me now.